turn my mic on. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> there was a moment at the beginning. I'm, I'm just going to have to ask, did we go live a little bit before the intro? I feel like there was something weird that happened on my system. And I was like, wait, were we live for the last like 15 seconds of prep when I was talking all that shit about the audience? I think oh, we might have been. I wasn't really talking. <laughs> uh, anyway, welcome, everybody. This is Hostility. Today is... What day of the week is this? Is this Tuesday? Uh, it feels like Tuesday. Yeah, April 25th, 2023, and you are watching The Line. As always, we invite you to call the show, 720-619-2288. Tonight's uh, topic will be a lot about sort of the normal spirituality, skepticism, deconstructing. If you are a theist, we would love to talk to you if you've got a religious belief. And today, I want to introduce the guest of honor. That's what we do here on Hostility. It's one of those things where I go, look, people, there are, there are, I have friends, and you all thought I didn't. Everyone thought there's no way he has friends. And I'm introducing today to you the wonderful, illustrious apostasy. Is that, am I pronouncing it right? How do you say it? I just say apostasy, just like the word apostasy, but with my name in it. spelled in it. I, yeah. My brain my so is, badly yeah. wants to say <laughs> apostasy, but I'll, I'll try know. and adjust. Apostasy. So many people just kind of trip up on it, but then some people just, yeah. Oops. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> So usually what we do on these shows uh, mm -hmm. on hostility, we start out just having a conversation with the person who is here, as it is often the case that this is the first time you will have met, uh, for example, today, apostasy. And then we will start taking calls at some point. Uh, we yeah. do have lines open. You can see the numbers down there, as well as a web link in the description. There are some people on the line now. Uh, we probably will reserve some lines for argumentative or theist callers, because that is our bread and butter. And honestly, it's what I even get out of bed for in the first place. <laughs> and then a uh, final reminder uh, before we sort of jump in that if you want to send a super chat of $5 or more, we will read that after the call-in portion. It is the way we will end the show. Uh, yeah. So that's us. We're here and we're doing it. Apostasy. <laughs> How yes. many people call you that now? Is that is that like a pretty common, like with your friends, does anybody just shorten it to Stacy or... Uh, no, I, even my friends in, in person will call me apostasy now as like a joke. And even my kids, like my, my boys who watch YouTube and they see my account, they'll call me apostasy as like a joke. So that's pretty metal. It's kind of carried over. Yeah. I like, I like that a lot. Everyone just calls me Jimmy. No, that's not true. Mr. Atheist. <laughs> I get called Mr. Atheist more than I get called Jimmy by not people in my personal life so much. It still happens every now and then. Um, yeah. Like Arden thinks it's very funny when we like when we're meeting up somewhere in public, uh, and she'll she'll like sneak up on me and go, "Oh my God, are you Mister Atheist?" Because uh, that thing ha that happens in real life from time to time, and I think yeah. she thinks it's funny how I shut down. But yeah, I I ap apostasy is actually like a pretty metal name to be Thank be you. called. Every yeah, I like it a lot. Tell people a little Thank bit about you. What what religious background you have? Uh, what's sure. What's the thing that, that is you? What is me? Okay, so the religious background that I have was I was born into a charismatic Christianity, like Pentecostal, uh, the hands raising, speaking in tongues, uh, falling over in the spirit, that kind of, uh, yeah, that, that denomination of just kind of the theatrical crazy Christian. Um, I was, from the time I was, an infant to not that long ago, um, about four years ago. And then um, I briefly on my way out of Christianity uh, went into Reformed, which is like Calvinism, um, very heavy doctrine, um, legalistic is what you would probably define it as. Lots of rules, lots of liturgy, lots of just dry, intense uh, Christianity. And um, that was for about a year before, yeah, no, maybe about two years before I completely left altogether. Um, How long ago was that now? Uh, about two years ago. Okay. So not not that long, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I was a, one of the people who left during the whole pandemic. There was a lot of us who began questioning during that time and left. And um, yeah, so when we became uh, members at this Reformed Church, um, part of their 
uh, protocol is church discipline. So uh, when we told them that we were no longer going to be uh, attending church, we no longer believed or we were, I, I just used the word skeptical at the time because I didn't want to come right out and say like I, I was an atheist. Um, they began to do church discipline, which was um, calling us out and publicly shaming us for about six months. Um, and wow. they just, yeah. <laughs> so we were excommunicated and this was a Christian denomination, which a lot of people think it was like Jehovah's Witnesses or. I mean, it sounds um, very Mormon in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Church discipline, excommunication. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah. their term is disfellowship. Or disfellowship, yeah. Even the fact that you've embraced the word apostasy mm -hmm. is, is, yeah. I mean, if, if someone had just told me these like minor details, I would have been like, oh, yo, Mormon? And yeah, it is very Mormon-esque. They, they do refer to us as apostates even yep. in their in their um the letters that they gave us as well so um that's kind of why i was like "Ooh, that's a perfect name for me yeah <laughs> um so yeah so that that's sort of what happened uh to us on yeah. our journey out and um but yeah my, my growing up was very uh crazy christian <laughs> if you can call it that um how big yeah. a congregation or, or big a movement in general is the thing you come from? Is it more localized or is it sort of large? The charis like the charismatic or the I guess which like because there's lots of two in a way, but so maybe quickly on each one. I, there's yeah. a lot of charismatic Christian denominations out there or sects yeah. or whatever. I, what I, were these nationwide movements or were they hype, more hyper local? I would say that was probably like the bigger one that a lot of people would be more familiar with because of a lot of televangelists like Joyce Meyer, um, Kenneth Copeland. Um, oh, yeah. Who else? Like Creflo Dollar. John I blow. Yeah. The winds <laughs> exactly. of God. Yeah. <laughs> on video you. Was, yeah, you know it. I do. Um, yeah, that was a funny video and all the remakes people did after that. Um, yeah, so that is what I grew up going to, like churches like that. I went to Joyce Meyer conferences quite often. Um, so yeah, like the word of faith, um, you know, like prosperity gospel, that is very much what I was used to, to hearing and, and believing, um, speak it into existence. Um, yeah. You don't speak that you're sick. You don't speak that you you don't have money. Um, you you believe that you are are rich, and you believe that you have things, and God will provide it all. And um, you don't want to have like a, a spirit of poverty in in your just in your words. Your words have power, which is just ridiculous. Um, so that's more of my whole life. That was sort of that upbringing um and then the the reformed um kind of niche part of it i find like that's sort of a smaller sect but the more i got into it it's actually a little bit bigger than i thought because of people like john macarthur um bodie bauckham those are all reformed pastors that are quite well known and and actually do have quite a large following. Yeah. Um, they just weren't in that stream that I grew up in, um, which both, I mean, versions are quite damaging um, <laughs> overall. So, uh, the I was cur I'm curious about. So while you were members of these congregations, if someone had simply mm -hmm. just come up to you and asked what religion are you? Was it just simply yeah. you'd say Christian or was there something more specific you would ever share? I would have said I'm a born again Christian. Okay. That's the language I would have used. And then as far as uh, outwardly, what the way they view society, are, were they a everybody who isn't us is going to hell type of Christian? Were they pretty much? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I. I and also, but even within those denominations, like especially more in the Calvinist reformed, um, yeah. they believed even other Christians weren't going to heaven. Like yeah. they thought, yeah, like 
I, they believe that people who were even uh, like the prosperity gospel Christians, they were not truly saved and they weren't going to go to heaven. So I thought when I came out of that version of Christianity, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that I now know what true Christianity is because if <laughs> I died, I wouldn't have gone to heaven. I probably would have gone to hell believing that yeah. doctrine or whatever. Um, so I felt like, whew, I'm so glad now I know. And then they really have a, they get their heads really big. Um, I find Calvinists, they're, they're very self-righteous. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Cause they're, they believe that they're part of the elect. And so um, how could you not be a little arrogant when, yeah. but almost every denomination or, or, or religion is, thinks they're right. the elect, right. even and, if they don't use that word. And their God loves everybody, but they love it, it loves them more for electing them to not exactly. be tortured for eternity. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's seeing the the different varieties and what is hatred uh, dressed up like it's love from the different religions always has always fascinated me. Um, what is it you think about the pandemic? Because a lot of people did relieve religion during the pandemic. What do you think yeah. it was about the pandemic that caused that? So it was around the summer of 2021 and it was right when like the vaccine was becoming very much available. Mm -hmm. And I, so I've always been like pro vaccine. I, my kids are vaccinated and all that, but because there was so much like should like, it was new and people were a little hesitant. Um, I was kind of like, is this something that I should do? My husband is very like pro science. He had, he was reading everything on COVID, everything on the vaccine. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. I'm really torn because on one part of my feed is all my Christian friends who are spreading all this misinformation and it's freaking me out. But then I have my husband over here, like Stace, like, here's all the science, here's all the facts. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I was feeling really torn on what to do. And then I decided to get vaccinated and he was very glad about that. Um, but when I started telling people, I felt like I had, to, like I was nervous to tell my Christian friends and they, they were very like, why would you do that? Like they, they actually came down on me quite hard and they were like almost disappointed in my decision. Hmm. And I was nervous to tell them like, and he was sitting back like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like nobody in my family or circle of friends would I be um, scared to tell or have to write out these long text messages to just like, you know, like tell them I got vaccinated, like who gives a crap? Um, and then, so I, I, I would tell them and they were actually like really upset and, and just thought less of me. Um, and then as I started kind of like look like learning more about um, just the pandemic and how so many Christians were not getting vaccinated and they were the ones who were actually like dying. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I went on Reddit and I joined um, a group called the Herman, Herman Cain Awards. Awards. I'm in there. Yeah. 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 And I was like, I just, I was fascinated by it and I was seeing like all those people and I was like, I mean, I'm sure that there were other people who were passing away as well that yeah. were not conservative or not Republic. Like I'm in Canada, right. FYI for everyone. Um, but I was just starting to see like when they, when they would post those people's Facebooks and all the stuff they believed, I'm like, they are all christian in some fashion or another like it just seemed like it would all yeah. come back to that and or the, or so it's often in the posts like the, exactly. the i'm not taking a vaccine i already took my vaccine it's called the blood of christ that sort of shit yeah yeah exactly yeah. so it was sort of like that's what kind of made me like sort of take a step back and and be like okay there's some kind of connection um these christians are believing some really crazy messed up things. Yeah. Um, what else are they possibly believing that's not true in relation to their belief system, 
Christianity, the Bible and all that. And so I was kind of putting that together and that's what made me take a look at what I believed as far as my entire life, like Christianity in general. And we had moved away from um, where we lived. We lived in Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, and that's where like our church was, our kids were in a Christian school, all my friends were Christian. I was, I had completely like surrounded myself with this Christian life. And in 2021, that summer, we moved four hours away to like a small town. And so um, that's when I started like thinking about what, what do Christians believe? Why do they believe it? Why are they acting so weird over this vaccine? Um, and just sort of making that connection. And so being away from the, the church I was in, all the people I know, um, my entire insular like Christian bubble that I had surrounded myself in, I finally felt kind of this freedom to like explore questions that have always yeah. been there, but I was just too afraid to look at. And it was when we moved to where we live now, um, I felt like I just could do what I wanted to do. And um, I was really scared to look at um, certain ideas because I had this overall fear of hell. Like if I do this, there's a really good chance I could be committing the sin of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. You don't quite know what that is, but you have that feeling in the back of your head, like, is this the sin of blasphemy? I might not ever be forgiven, which means I will be sent to hell when I die. Oops, sorry. Um, and um, I just, I was so afraid of hell. So I really wanted to like question all these things. Um, and I told my husband one day, like, I, there's just something about this. I don't know if I believe all of this, but I'm so scared and I'm just, I don't want to go to hell. And he never believed in hell. He, he always went to church with us and, and kind of like went along with it for my benefit. Yeah. Um, cause everyone always asks, how did your husband take it? My husband, he, he was sort of like, he's a skeptic, um, yeah. by nature. And uh, he was just a very supportive husband for like 16 years, um, <laughs> just going along with it. But he saw this quote on Twitter that said, um, life is the spark between two identical voids, the one before birth and the one after death. And I just had this like epiphany moment of, oh my God, I have no concept of what life was like before I was born. I have no recollection of it. It's probably going to be the exact same when I die. So why am I so afraid of hell? So it was sort of like, that was the jumping point I needed to just start looking into like, how is the Bible actually put together? Where did these stories come from? And when I started finding out like the story of like Noah's art, cause I was also a Bible like, literalist um i thought it like i believed in creationism like i was Oof. all those things yeah young <laughs> right. earth Oof. it's right yeah young at earth least creation. it was round right in your world the earth yes. is round uh, not up for question yes. that's good my grandma tried to tell me for a while it was flat and Oof. uh yeah she's out there with all those conspiracies and she really tried to turn my head to thinking that and i'd come home and my husband is like that is crazy. You yeah. are not believing now. Like, I don't care what you believe, but you are not believing in a flat earth. And I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> but um, anyway, so um, yeah, so I, I discovered like the story of Noah's Ark about that being in other mythologies. Um, and that, that literally, when I found that out, like, I remember my heart was just like pounding out of my chest because that was the one card that was like taken out of the bottom of that like stack of cards and everything just fell right then. And I was like, yeah. if there's one lie in this book, that means the entire thing is a lie and I can just throw it all away because if God is like, if, if he's true, why would he have a lie in there? Why would he have to steal another story? So I just kind of yeah. threw it away. Like after 36, 
years um, in one afternoon. And it was so exciting and scary, but really exciting all at the same time. And then from there, I was just like, okay, now I need to know everything. Like I just, yeah. I need to know everything. And I haven't stopped consuming knowledge and as much as I can and learning as much as I can, because um, I didn't want to just like, no, okay, it's not true. I'm done. It's been my entire life. I was devoted to this. Um, I, I loved Jesus as much as like anybody could love an imaginary being, yeah. but to me he was real. Yeah. Um, we give so we give figures like that almost like a grandparent level reference. It, it, more oh. in some cases, like the prophets I grew up with were almost higher on my list of like people I love than grandparents. Um, they had to be it's creepy, but yeah, they had to be. Like Jesus said, like you have to hate your mother and your father you, and, but that was that was hard to me because i love my mom so much and i was just like i don't know <laughs> yeah so your mom but I really, truly, yeah <laughs> i, I want to specify which mom i mean <laughs> yeah yeah you guys got a little crush um little something going on but yeah <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah so it, it you would think that i would be like not knowing how to get out of bed in the morning because like my whole belief system was shattered. It was quite the opposite. I was, I would wake up with butterflies in my stomach because I just thought like now this whole world is open to me in a way that I never saw before. Like I was so excited because like before I would go and I'd, I'd like walk, go on a walk or a hike or look out our living room window and we have a really beautiful view of the valley. And I'd be like, wow, like look at how beautiful God made the mountains. And oh, look at the sky. He made it so pretty. But then I started looking like, look at the way that this like entire like atmosphere, this entire like universe is created. And I was like, there's no way that just some random per or God just said, okay, let there be light. And there was light. Like there's way more work. There's way more history and everything that's gone into this than just like a, a moment in time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm learning so much and I would be so excited to tell my husband and he was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so um, am I amazing? Our signal got a little scrambled. Something's oh okay. Something's oh, happening. Like I have a, I got. I would have to tell someone to turn off the Wi-Fi upstairs. Oh no! Save us the bandwidth. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I will text him right now. It might help to just refresh the browser too. It'll pause you for a moment, but then it'll bring you back. Yeah. Often it helps. Okay. Um, one second. I'm sorry. You're fine. I mean, it seems to have improved already. I think, I think she hit for fresh as I was saying that. There we go. Yeah. I think we're better. Okay. I just told them to turn off all the Wi-Fi and computers. <laughs> just, this um, is my internet time. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah. So rather than it being like this, like crisis feeling of where to like, where do I go now? How do I pick up these pieces? Yeah. I was so excited about like learning everything I could possibly learn and like not having to just learn it all from one book. Um, yeah. I, I think there's, just, yeah, I definitely think there's an advantage to the way that you, uh, got to move away from the old community and stuff. I think that's huge for when, when you're so, my theory on like why so many people left religion during the pandemic was you just were separated from that often weekly, or if you're Mormon, it's like every three days or so refreshment of you're a piece of shit and you can't do this without <laughs> us. Like, you know, you imperfect sack of crap, like, and, and having that, um, so routine and so embedded in your routine that it actually takes. And so one thing I've, I've, I've challenged, uh, religious people with before is just saying like, look, if your religion is wrong, or is true, and you take a month off of going to church, it'll still be true after. But yeah. if you take that month off, I bet you're going to start at letting yourself ask some, you're letting yourself ask yourself some questions that you don't even permit yourself to ask. It's like, 
it's it's funny because there's supposed to be sin in non-belief and apostasy, but they want to mm-hmm. make you feel more guilty for even just asking the questions that potentially could lead there. Like I I can remember praying and apologizing for just wondering, like just being like, what if the church isn't true? Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Like and 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 so you have all of these things in place to stop you from exploring further. Um yeah. and I definitely think, yeah, that separation from because of the pandemic, not going physically into church, not having the eyes on you, because going to church is also a performance as well. Like, it's not just that you're there to be there. It's you're there to prove to everybody else you're still faithful and shit. Uh, And then moving away and being away from the reinforcement community, I definitely think would be, uh, yeah, hugely, hugely useful. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that before? I think maybe we jump into calls here in a minute. Oh yeah. Wow. That time went really fast. <laughs> it does that. I do that. It's, wow. That was goes, crazy. I you was must be having fun. Say, I hope. I, I'm having a great time. Um, I was just going to say really quick about like how you said, if you just even thought like, is the church true? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I even thought that. I, I like those thought crimes for sure. Um, yeah. They used to really get me big time. So I really relate to that. And um, yeah, that that, that was a huge weight to also get rid of. And I think just getting rid of a lot of the the dogma and the just the guilt. I had a, I had so much guilt all the time. So I was really happy to just kind of free myself from always feeling this condemnation of did I do something wrong? Or even though I never really did anything wrong, I always felt like I had done something really wrong and I never knew how to feel better. And now I don't have that anymore. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's extremely freeing. It was funny too, because you were talking about at the beginning, uh, things about like the way they'll weaponize the word apostate towards you and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's something very funny about the way you are spoken to after you leave, because they'll use these phrases and these threats that are wholly uninteresting. They're like, uh-huh. it's it's like being told, oh, you're going to get that lump of coal. Like, you don't understand <laughs> the level to which I am not afraid of hell anymore. I am right. not worried that it's true anymore. It is such yeah. an apparent farce. It's like, it's like going behind the curtain and meeting the actual wizard and then leaving and still being like, oh, I hope the wizard blesses <laughs> us on our ride home. Like, so, yeah. so stupid. Um, yeah. and it, it is funny how they're relying on it for that thing that, that part of you that stays in it for a while that doesn't mm-hmm. wear off right away. That fear thing that, that when, when, or when time gets tough, they love that. They love when it's like, oh, you left the church and now, however much later you're hitting an adversity. This is God trying to call you home. Exactly. So you're like, cool. Do you know what a predator is? You fucking sack of shit. Like. <laughs> Yeah. You just said that to me unironically, yeah. you like garbage human being. Like yeah. what, what should you all line up all the religions you all get together and then you fight over my soul. Whoever wins, they get to come and try and scare me into coming to church because that's, yeah. that's all of your tactics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the other, that's the other fun part about doing shows like this where um, people who call in with a religious belief only have their one religious belief that they're defending. Mm-hmm. But we as public figures who talk against religion have to have a set of tools that is effective against all of them, Mm -hmm. all several thousand of them, several thousand versions of, uh, and it's, it's, uh, so far not been that, not been a problem. I got to tell you, there's not really been, you know, I mean, I did get called a slow boy, but that's about the, the worst, the worst moment on this show, I think. And then by a guy who, a slow boy who doesn't understand philosophy by a guy who then revealed he didn't know what hard solipsism was, uh, oh. which I'm not super into philosophy, but I know what hard, yeah. because I took one course and I made it to week three years ago. I know what it is. Like, <laughs> God damn. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, some people are asking about a manual in the chat. I haven't blocked a manual. I don't know that we would take the call. Is it, is this the, are people hoping for the like coronation ceremony of making someone new talk to a manual? Cause I don't oh, know about gosh. that. All I know is the most recent call for some reason is seven minutes into its day. Why is it? Why? I don't understand it. Do people call in and try to argue with our screeners? What is going on? Um, oh. <laughs> I'm just going to ask the screener. 
<laughs> long screen. And... Uh, all right. Like, y'all know the show is after the screener. If you call in, don't try to argue with the screener itself. We're going to start with talking to Claire in Kentucky. Claire, you are on the line talking to Jimmy and Apostasy. How are you? I'm good. How are y'all doing? I'm just dandy. Hi, Claire. Hi. Um, I, I know you get annoyed about people who still don't understand the definitions of atheist and theist, but I... I just had to ask mm -hmm. um, so I can make sure I understand. So an atheist is anybody who is not 100% convinced that a God exists? Look, if somebody, if somebody is like, only 80% and they say I still identify as a theist, I'm not going to force them to take on the atheist label. Uh, in fact, the first thing I thought when you said, I know you get annoyed when people mix, I actually don't get annoyed when they mix up the terms. I get annoyed when they try to tell me my term is wrong. The term I'm using for me is right. wrong. That's the thing that annoys me. I honestly don't give a fuck what, whenever people do have the like, are rocks atheist argument? I say, why the fuck would I spend a single second giving a shit if rocks are atheists or not? So I wouldn't necessarily say the if they don't if, if an atheist is anyone who's not completely sure. Um, it's a it's not about sure. It's about belief. And mm -hmm. if 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 I ask you, do you believe a god or gods exist? And you say yes, regardless of how sure you are, but you say yes, you do believe that. Then generally, it would be my instinct to label you a theist. If you say no, or I don't know, or basically anything that indicates you do not hold the belief, then I would say you are an atheist. But if you say that, if I say that to you and you go, I'd rather stick with the theist label because I feel so drawn to the idea, like I'm, I'm actually, I just can't imagine anything but a God, even though I can't say it is a God for sure, uh, had to at least start the universe. If somebody says that and they say like, I still want to stick with theist or deist is probably more likely in that scenario. Um, I'm not, you know, I don't care. Like fucking do, do you have live your life and take whatever label you like, as long as it's actually, you know, makes any sense at all. You don't get to just, I guess, co-opt other labels. Don't say like, no, I don't believe in God. Therefore I am a cheese maker. Blessed are the <laughs> cheese makers. That doesn't make sense. Does that help Claire? Um, Okay, so I think I know the answer to my next question. I was going to say, like, a lot of religious people will admit that they don't know for sure that there's a God. So that doesn't make them atheists, does it? They're still theists. A lot of religious people don't know? Like, they claim to like not know if there is a God? They'll say that they don't know for sure, but they think there's a God. Then they're probably a theist. If they say knowing and believing aren't interchangeable, like you often, you often use both, right? I know two plus two is four. And I guess I technically also believe two plus two is four. But the reason why I take my belief and turn it into confidence is I can do a level of demonstration of two plus two equals four. And I can show to other people that objectively for reasons outside of myself, two plus two equals four. No one's asking for objectivity on things that are pure belief statements. So if you say, I do believe in a God, but I could be wrong, the I could be wrong part doesn't matter. It's the I do mm -hmm. believe in a God that matters. Are you trying to figure out if you're a theist or an atheist? Is that the point you're at? Or is there some um, example or some person who you're trying to figure out? Um, I have been for a long time trying to figure out if I am, but I think... Now, I am an atheist, but for a long time, I was trying to figure out, um, but I just believe less now, so I know I am an atheist, but I was still confused on the definitions. But also, um, several months ago, um, a guy called and said he was an agnostic theist, 
and you were like, I don't see how anyone can be an agnostic theist. Sure. And you only let him say that because he insisted. Um, can you explain that? Well, I think we had a discussion which followed. It would be weird if we hadn't. So I'm sure that I, I actually had him clarify, and I clarified why. The number one time a person's going to call in and they'll say, like, unsure or still a theist, but and I will ask for clarification why they say that. They'll say, well, I, uh, I, I would, I'm not an atheist because I don't leave the, po I, I still leave the possibility out there. There's a possibility that there could be a God. I still am open to that possibility, to which I say that sentence is incoherent because I am an atheist but I leave open the possibility because it's never been demonstrated to be impossible. It's also never been demonstrated to be possible, but I, as an atheist, I don't say there's no way there is no God in the universe. I only say, I see no reason to believe there's a God. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if somebody calls and says, I'm not an atheist because I have the exact same position as you, then I usually say to them, that's wild and, and <laughs> weird. Uh, <laughs> Now, when somebody says they're an agnostic theist, that is to say that their position is they believe in God, but they also believe that there's no way to know there is a God, as in to say, I don't have compelling evidence. It's more that I can't empathize with that position. I'm not going to hold a belief for which I don't have a good foundation to hold that belief. And to say you're an apostate, uh, 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 sorry, not an apostate, uh, <laughs> agnostic, I completely forgot the word for a second there. Uh, an agnostic <laughs> atheist or an agnostic theist is to say there are no good reasons. There's no demonstration that there is a God, but I still believe anyway. And it's just a position that escapes me as how a person could do that. And, you know, I guess claim to value truth. And maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. You know, the, maybe those are the people when you say, do you care yeah. if it's true or not? Maybe they say no. I don't know. Do you ever look at the the Richard Dawkins atheism scale? Like that something that maybe is worth taking a look at? It might no, help I, you. I have never seen that, but I will look that up. Sure. Are you worried about taking on a label? Is it, what's the um, what's your relationship I'm, with this question? I guess I'm asking. I. I just had to make sure I understood the definition. Sure. Um, although I am a little worried about telling people, but you don't have to tell any, I'm you don't not, have to use a label no. that you're not ready to use. Like I, I started YouTube when atheist was still mostly a dirty word. When, when mm -hmm. polls still showed no one would vote for an atheist in just five years, a lot of that has morphed in a lot of ways. Um, not to say that it's, it's still not a slam dunk to be an atheist, especially in a lot of places, but there's a lot more places that you can blend in. And it's kind of like, if you walk up to a group of people and go, I'm an atheist, they're going to just go, okay, <laughs> okay, sure. You don't <laughs> have to be like, here. Like, go away if you, if this is what, yeah. Do, do you come from like a Christian background or a religious background? Cause I think when you come from that, you're used to having to like share your beliefs all the time and be proud of your beliefs. And so um, I know that that can be kind of hard to, to change that way of thinking of like, okay, now, now that I'm, I no longer believe um, I have to share that with everyone. You don't have to one label yourself and you also don't have to share it if you're not ready. Um, it's not like when you convert to Christianity and they say, okay, now you have to go tell everyone and share this good news. So, it, it, it can be a private thing just for for you until you are ready, if, if that's ever the case. Yeah. Um, I was raised Catholic, so, like, I didn't mean I was just going to go tell people, but, like, if my family wonders, mm -hmm. like, I would have to tell them. Sorry, you're saying you do have to tell your family? I I was doing some production stuff. What was that last part? Oh, um, like they might ask, um, and I would feel like I had to tell them. 
like lying by omission. <laughs> I look if 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 the best thing for oh. your life and the peace in your life and your safety is to lie, just fucking lie. It's yeah. not the thing is is that it's like it's it's shitty to tell people to lie because you're basically saying deceive people, but you're talking about from a group who has used I have yet to see, especially Catholicism, uh, a, a, a religious indoctrination method that I don't categorize as abusive, uh, and that that is. And when I say I don't categorize, I mean are consistent with abusive tactics to try and compel people to believe or act certain ways. And so, on the one hand, it's like, yeah, it feels shitty to say like lie to your parents or lie to your family until you're ready. But on the other hand, if it's about your safety, your safety should be prioritized. And the people mm -hmm. who would jeopardize your safety by trying to mentally shame you into submission, into returning to church, they don't get a say on whether it was okay or not for you to lie. Fuck that. Like, very much, it really. Uh, just just what you have to do to be safe and feel safe and do things when you're ready, do that. It's not fun. You know, I, I can remember a period of time when I was lying and gave the Thanksgiving prayer just thinking, like, this is fucking ridiculous. But I know... I know the ways to do it, right? Like I, I had mm -hmm. been a part of them and a part of thousands of prayers over the years and had conducted thousands of prayers over the years. So I knew the words to say. I knew how mm -hmm. to, and then I had to go to my stake president's home to discuss why I wasn't going on a mission. Uh, and at that time, I just really emphasized my health issues, whether or not they would or wouldn't have obstructed. At the time, I probably, if I, if I had really wanted to go, I probably could have, though then what would have followed in the next two years that I didn't know was coming would have probably sent me back home. But I can't, you know, see the future. Anyway, yeah. this it was a very interesting experience for me because I go to this person's house who was like the patriarch of the whole region of everyone who lives in like Cheyenne and surrounding cities in Wyoming. Uh, and he's like the guy and a guy who I admired and I liked his temperament. I still would say that, yeah, temperament wise, he was, seemed like a good dude and sat there and was discussing these things. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, I know none of this is true. I'm having <laughs> sex. I'm, I'm doing like, this is all bullshit. And he's sitting there telling me like, well, I, the spirit is telling me your faith is unshaken. And he's literally like saying the opposite of what is true. And I realized this wasn't even hard. This the deception I'm doing right now to just maintain my life and and a sense of security and safety. And it would be my brother who would eventually out me and take that all away. But it wasn't even difficult to do. You just cosplay what you used to okay. do. Um, and so it's 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 tough. It's one of those things where it's yeah, you should prioritize your safety above all else and not feel guilty about trying to keep yourself safe from it's not even hard to call the Catholic church an abusive organization. Like we all pretty much know that already. Uh, it, it, you know, other people with other more obscure religions might find that a harder challenge, but it's Catholicism. <laughs> that shit hates you for, yeah. for being born and you're a woman. So it ha they hate you even more. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Claire, anything else before we, uh, is that, I probably gave you a little too much to think about, but anything else before we, we let you go? That's all. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Claire. You heard it first here, kids. Lie to your parents. <laughs> Lie to them all. Apostasy <laughs> endorses this message from Jimmy Snow. Well, I definitely agree. Like, if yeah. it jeopardizes your safety or, you know, in, in that situation, there's no need to out yourself. Yeah. Just, we should have just to out yourself. We should have set up yeah. some kind of green screen thing here. I'm realizing, like, we could have so cleanly made it look like we were at the same desk. Yeah. Even great. Oh, yeah. I know, because like our height is our. Well, very I do. Similar. Yeah. I try to match the uh, the framing and the that's. I have uh, a robot camera, and so <laughs> when a guest comes on, these are the little things because Jimmy what cares about production up? more than his family. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. I don't have a family. Uh, anyway, the, the I, 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 it's one of the production things I do. Sometimes I'll try to yes. make sure that it's still established that my head mm -hmm. is bigger and I'm a little taller. And I like I feel like in this case it's at least a little implied because uh, I have a ginormous head and I'm six foot two. So uh, you are you know, so tall. I and just large presence. It's 
it, every time I see a video like of me in a crowd, you just have like these people around and then you're like fucking ogre. There's just an ogre chilling out with these people. That is a large man. What is going oh, on? And I'm not saying it like a like I look intimidating or beefy, just large in presence. Just, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know how, how tall everyone is. <laughs> I don't know how I, I've pulled it off for five years. Most people think I'm I'm some sort of short twink somehow. And then they meet me in person and they're like, wow, this is You're tall. Well, okay. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I often, I, I, I'm not kidding. I, almost every time I'm like about to meet somebody in person for the first time, this happened with Johnny Angel, for example, one of the, uh, uh, he does Colin shows. I think he's done with us too. Um, and I called, I was like, oh man, I'm looking forward to see you. I just want to give you a heads up now. I'm taller and fatter than you're expecting. <laughs> and, and no one ever challenges it. Uh, oh my goodness. Some, I guess actually every now and then they're like, no, I thought you were tall, but they don't challenge the other one. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> On to, uh, boy, some of these calls are, there's some, uh, oh. there's some complex things in here. This one, I'm excited. yeah, this we'll talk to Ian, but this one's sort of, so Ian, we've talked to in the past, Ian, by the way, you are on the line. We've spoken in the past. Uh, I want to address off the top to make sure that we are being responsible. Ian, when we've spoken in the past, we've been, we've also talked to you about what were symptoms of schizophrenia, making sure that everybody understands that is not a thing that we have any expertise to treat on here. Everything related to that specifically should be handled by professionals. With that said, while bringing up the that that used to be the thing, you realize that that stuff that was, was schizophrenic symptoms wasn't actually ghosts or demons or whatever, that you've deconstructed right. from that, you've been able to emerge uh, uh, from, from that fucking with your perception of faith and everything. And now you want to ask, you want to present potentially a challenge to disprove God and see what Stacy and I think about your potential disproof of God. Is all of that fair? Is that accurate? Yeah. That, that's, yeah. Just try, I have so, to try and be responsible because um, this is sort of like a heavier topic if, if, okay. if you feel me, Ian. Yeah. So, um, the, the thing that's kind of like proof to me is that like I and I'm doing it to kind of keep me to be an atheist because I don't want to fall back into all that insanity that I was falling into. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I just remind myself God hasn't texted me. And I mm -hmm. and I believe that if a God that is capable of anything and he's supposed to love you where's the text, you know, clarifying things. So to me, I use that to kind of keep me on, you know, just get away from all that spiritual nonsense. That honestly, it messes with my head in a way I just do not like. Yeah. I, um, so Ian, what I would recommend for you is rather than focusing on, if you can come up with a way to disprove God, because like the challenge that you were saying isn't a bad challenge. And it's sort of one of those things where it's like, doesn't it seem like a loving God would have made sure uh, it's not a bad challenge, but it also doesn't challenge a lot of people's faith. Because remember that there's a lot of Christians who go, no, he only wants some of us to succeed. And I'm one of the chosen and you're not, you are meant to go to hell like that. That exists amongst Christianity. Yeah. And so what I would do rather than Probably. focusing on, what disproofs you can come up with is you've already been able to see through a lot of the beliefs you had taken on and, and learn from the lesson of, I took on a lot of untrue beliefs. So next time I'm just not going to believe until I have a good reason. And those good reasons need to be externally verifiable. It has to be something that other people have proof of as well. Uh, uh, that that could be demonstrated to other people, that could be defended to other people, that could be defended to Matt and Matt not point out how non-defensible it is when you call in, for example. Like this, that's that's the the recommendation I would have more than trying to focus on like finding disproofs of God when God literally has the quality of magic and wanting to hide all the time in a lot of religions. In a lot of religions, basically is an uh, a task without payoff. You can never get there. Mm -hmm. Stacy, what do you think? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, oh, he just asked what I thought. Um, I huh. agree. I mean, I, as far as asking if God could text you, <laughs> I mean, I used to play those types of little mind games with myself, um, especially when I was going through a hard time as well. Um, like, if God, if you're really there, can you do this? Or I struggled a lot with anxiety and I just wish that God could just take it away because I thought, why would I be laying here dealing with this if you cared about me? So um, he didn't. <laughs> and I had to get, you know, help in other ways. So, yeah, um, yeah I, and I, I don't know your background in any way other than just what, you know, Jimmy said at the beginning. Um, but I don't. I don't think that's a way to really like find out if God's real is by those little, little uh, games. And yeah, you would need to have more proof what with other people involved um, to, you know, have, have evidence and yeah. So what do you think? <laughs> I thought it was uh, just kind of like a simple logic kind of thing, like logically, you know, this, so, I don't know. I just thought it made logical sense. But, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to, like, try to just not even think about, like, any religion or atheism or any of that. Like, I'm, I'm going to say an atheist, but I'm just not even going to, like, think about nothing like that no more. Honestly, Ian, like that's fine. And this, this is something that actually gets lost a little bit in atheist activism that we need to reiterate more. If you want to be the person who deconstructs from religion, you've already seen why there's no good reason to believe it. Stay a skeptic. If, if suddenly a good reason to believe it sh does show up, you know, live in a brain that, that will be able to receive that. But I don't think you have to worry that it's going to. Uh, and then just go and live your goddamn life. Like I, that's an ironic statement, but yeah, like Ian, for real, that's fine. If you just want to go and we don't, you know, we don't have meetings. You don't have to pay tithing. There's no, there's yeah. no, uh, uh, consequences to not even becoming a patron, a patron at patreon.com slash call the line, which everyone should do. Like there's no consequences to not doing it. You should only do the things you want to do. And frankly, I totally understand when a lot of people, especially who come from super abusive religions, deconstructing is trauma. It's kind of like how going to rehab for drugs is trauma. I know I did it. It's traumatic. It's a traumatic experience, but it's good for you. And then on the other side of it, one of the best ways you can stay clean, stay out of that world is basically to literally stay out of that world. You don't hang out with the friends you used to have. If one of the things you learn in rehab is if you're dating another addict, either break up or you will relapse. And even if there's the chance that somebody's going to be the exception of that, it's pretty good words to live by. Uh, and so when I when I got clean afterwards, I didn't hang out with the same people. I didn't even speak to the same people. Like it was uh, as soon as I could, I actually moved to not be in the same environment. And and a lot of that stuff, yeah, they, there's nothing wrong with like once you deconstruct to go. I don't want to give a fuck anymore and then not, and then don't give a fuck yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Well, uh, I'm going to head out. So, cool. uh, y'all have a good day. All right. Good call. Thank you, you too, Ian. Ian. Yeah. See you, bud. Bye. It's a little sad because in a way I'm also telling people that like, if the day comes where you don't need us anymore. Now that said, mm -hmm. we're expanding our programming in a ton of different ways. And I think that there's going to be by the end of this year, if the entire schedule is full and I've got a blocked thing, it's colorful, uh, that shows off what I'm wanting the future to look like. Um, we're going to have five days a week, roughly eight hours of content between multiple channels. I know I'm an insane person and That's amazing. some of it will focus on current events, political and social stuff. Some of it's going to be like the different elements of deconstruction. So maybe you don't need to deconstruct your young earth creationism anymore, but the shame you feel about wanting to buy a butt plug at adamandeve.com <laughs> using the code line at checkout for 50% off it, like that 
sort of <laughs> wanting to wanting to do explore yourself sexually and stuff. That mm -hmm. we've got a new show called Sex Expectations that we're still working out the launch of, and oh, everyone who knows cool. about the hack. Uh, that hack is is still and but then there's also going to be focused on there's another show that's going to be coming out that's more focused on very fundamentalist religion very that sort of higher end because look Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses and Scientologists yeah. and all of that they deconstruct differently than a Catholic or right. uh, you're like I feel like you're somewhere between them you're like you came from like above Catholic and, uh, and towards some fundamentalism, but maybe not quite all the way up to like yeah. Mormonism, Jehovah's <laughs> Witness stuff. Yeah, I'm somewhere. Yeah, yeah. definitely in there. Um, I, I had to kind of deconstruct two times because I feel like my deconstruction kind of began when I left the charismatic yeah. uh, religion because I, I started deconstructing those beliefs and that's what sort of uh, got me into the Calvinism, but I began questioning a lot, and that's what gave me sort of the jump start into deconstructing uh, the rest of it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it was a, a very interesting journey. <laughs> yeah, and and so it's mm -hmm. it's I definitely feel for like people who call in like Ian, um, mm -hmm. who they get to a point where they're like. I want to move on with my life. And in a way, yeah. even I feel like my, like this that I'm doing, it makes it seem like I've never moved on, but in a, my deconstruction is over. This now mm -hmm. is like, this is the direction I then wanted to take my life. The activism, yes. the, the yes. attention. I mean, let's be real. I'm not on here cause I don't love attention. Uh, <laughs> it's like, let's, I'm a YouTuber <laughs> fucking, I love attention. It's fine. I, I can yeah. admit it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's fine. It's fine to go like, Hey yeah. man, I've deconstructed and now I want to get back to my job as an engineer or a fucking whatever, whatever your job yeah. is, whatever your passion like, is, do it. For my husband who he kind of just went to church with us. He read one book by yeah. Bart Ehrman and, and I was like, do you want me to get you more? And he's like, no, one's good for me. That answered all my questions. I'm done. And that was it for him. Like, yeah. so then that's totally fine too. <laughs> That's good. No, I, that's, yeah. the, I, I am almost jealous of a lot of people who didn't have much deconstructing to do though. Part yeah. of me also then like, like I, when you talk about your husband's experience, I still have so many like outstanding questions about <laughs> to go to church that long and not believe it. There's no, there's no yeah. way there's zero impact on your, on your brain in that world. Felt, and so it's like, he felt really bad. Like he, he was hoping one day something would just kick in and he would just have this like, oh yeah, this is true. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, he, he said he liked the romantic idea of this life after death in heaven, but he never actually like, he, he's like my rational and logical brain just could never get me there. Yeah. So there's so yeah, many elements I, too, where you can tell that there are doubts even amongst believers that like death mm -hmm. isn't actually the end. The, to be so <laughs> devastated at a funeral is even right? like sometimes you'll see somebody crying at a funeral of someone they didn't know very much. Mm -hmm. Like I get it. If it's your partner or whatever, and it's somebody where you're like, well, I don't know how long until I'm going to die. So I'm crying because I'm going to miss this person for the 20 years it takes for me to die. And re if you genuinely believe that, but yeah, yeah. some of the level of, it's <laughs> like if your family member was suffering and you truly believed in an afterlife, wouldn't you only be stoked that they died? Like, that's what I always thought too. Like, especially when it's someone like who's later on in their years and, and you so believe they're going to be in heaven and, or especially if you're just like, God heal them. And then you're so upset because God didn't heal. Them. It's like, okay, well, we know they're going, or we know they're going to heaven. Um, but people are just so upset. I'm like, this is so strange. Like, why are we, if that's what we believe, why are we so broken up? So, you know, you have those questions, but yeah. 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 So. Well, we have tons of other very okay. interesting calls lined up. We should okay. take more. Sorry. God, stop <laughs> delaying me. No, it wasn't. Did you just apologize? <laughs> don't, don't, don't ever I'm let Canadian. me make you feel I'm guilty Canadian. for <laughs> tangents. I mean, you, I think I started it anyway. Um, <laughs> let's see. I want to see, we have a friend of yours waiting. I think I want to get that me? one. On. Mm -hmm. Someone oh, called God. Andrew. Is this 
Oh, says friend of Stacy who wants to ask a question oh. is undecided whether they're an atheist or theist. You don't know who this person is? I don't. I mean, I I don't know. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. just in case it's an old church person, I'll keep my hand on the on the mute. Uh, Andrew from South Carolina, uh, you are on the line. Who are you, Andrew? <laughs> Hey Jimmy, hey Stacy, how oh, are you? Doing? <laughs> this is Andrew. Andrew, remember? Andrew, I, uh, I he, need when, to remember when, Andrew. Okay, when you came on Skeptic Haven with yeah. me and Andrew, he yes. was a co-host. Oh. This is Andrew. Got it. Okay, when great. You said South Carolina. <laughs> I was like, I was like I, okay. I remember you, Andrew, <laughs> no. but the name I don't. I, I, I I'm terrible with oh, names. Oh no, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, so it's all good. You, you interview so many people. So no I'm also worries, stupid. No so I mean, please don't discount that. No, don't say that. Don't no. say it's that. True. Water I, in my mouth. Andrew, I celebrate that it's true. I'm not kidding. I will say it proudly okay. because I want to demonstrate to mm -hmm. everybody that you can are fully capable of having good reasons to not believe in God, even when you're an idiot like mm -hmm. I am. It is not an unaccessible thing. You don't have to be a fucking genius. I am not a genius. Probably, but, uh, uh, you know, probably, <laughs> who, I mean, I can't say objectively. I've, I, 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 oh. I test well, but that's, there's so much, I, so much basic shit escapes my intellectual capability that I want to make sure that, uh, uh, I'm proudly stupid. It's, it's better that I'm stupid. Otherwise this becomes an elitist show. <laughs> Aww. Anyway, Andrew, go ahead. What's your question? Yeah. So. Yeah, I was excited to talk to Stacy, so I was like, oh, I gotta have questions ready. So I guess one of my questions for y'all is like, what are some major misconceptions about atheists? Oh, well, I can say right off the bat, when I told my husband, I'm like, I think I'm an atheist. He was kind of freaked out. <laughs> he, uh, I think he thought, that meant like I was like a Satan worshiper all of a sudden. Um, mm -hmm. And I had to explain to him, I was like, no, 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 it's, it's nothing bad. It literally just means I don't believe in, in God anymore. That that's it. Like, and then I had to start telling him so-and-so is an atheist. So-and-so is an atheist. Um, nothing changes. I just don't believe in God. We're not going to go to church. And he was like, Oh, okay. So I think, I think the biggest misconception is just um, that you're, I don't know, going to be like this gothic, scary person. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was the first response that uh, I got from someone super close to me who knows me so well that knows that I'm not going to just all of a sudden change my personality. And yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the term is just misunderstood. Yeah. Um, I think another one that is so fucking obviously stupid, but they don't care. They don't uh -huh. want to know that this is stupid is to say atheists are atheists because they wanted to sin. I have been in the situation oh. of deconstructing and still being terrified of the first time trying alcohol mm. uh, in the case of Mormonism mm. or, or like you are still so afraid of the things that, and it's truly the thing you have to deconstruct from is the idea that sin even exists. It doesn't. And, yeah. and it doesn't go away as soon as your belief in God goes away. It's, it's mm -hmm. for most people anyway, mm -hmm. it's not instant where you go like, oh, God isn't real and butt stuff is fine. Um, <laughs> that's, it's not that quick. It's, it takes yeah. more time. Again, use the code LINE, L-I-N-E at checkout for 50% <laughs> off one item. You can do it over and over again. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's, and so that's, that's like a very common misconception uh, where it's, mm -hmm. it, we went to sin. It's easier to quote unquote sin, not just sin, do mm -hmm. things that are actually evil outside of religion. Something like evil that, mm. that we as a society understand is evil, even if we aren't religious. It's easier to do mm -hmm. that when you're religious. Because what do you have was, to do? You yeah. can have all the sex you want, you can hurt all the people you want, and then somebody else will forgive you, not exactly. the people you hurt. <laughs> It's way easier yeah. to Ooh. sin as a religious person. It's so fucking yeah. stupid. The idea that if I really just wanted to sin, maybe I'd still leave Mormonism, <laughs> but I'd still go join a church that all I have to do is go say fucking poems and then mm -hmm. I'm absolved. Like yeah. fucking so stupid. Anyway. Yeah, no, I, I was thinking that too. Because yeah, if you want to sin, just stay, stay in religion and just 
say, oh, sorry, please forgive me to the ceiling. And you're like, okay, I'm, I'm good now. <laughs> That's it. So, yeah. Um, I think that, yeah, that, that's probably the two biggest misconceptions is people think you just want to go sin. And I always say my life really hasn't changed. I'm still a mom. I'm still a wife. I still get up and make mm -hmm. lunches for my kids. I still do all the same things. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Stacey, I actually hope you stop <laughs> yeah. saying that. I hope you tell Why? people it has changed because well, you don't no, live no, no, in no. fear that's, anymore. No, that's like that's I mean. the main uh -oh. thing. Just, yeah. Yeah, but I just mean like the day-to-day -day events that take sure. place. Um, yeah, I haven't mm -hmm. gone out and like done anything like crazy. But yes, mm -hmm. my life has hit. I, so many people have said to me that they've never seen me so happy, which is true. And I love that. And I oh. yeah. I say, yes, that is 100% true. Um, I've had my in-laws even say to me, you just seem so much lighter. Your shoulders are more relaxed. You're just... Mm. Oh, and I'm like, thank you, because I See, really do feel My that family way. is like, Jimmy, your posture is dog shit. That's that's what my family <laughs> says. It's basically the same thing. Oh. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I, I just mean that, like, I actually, when yeah. people bring it up, I want to talk about how different it is. Sure, there's still day-to-day yeah. -day life. You still have to worry about expenses. You got to pay your bills. Yeah. You got all that stuff. And all of that's still very in line, but, like, not living in fear, not... Here's the biggest mm -hmm. change. Yes. Do you know what's changed the most? If somebody does oh. something nice for me, I thank them, not God. Yeah. Um, if a doctor yeah. is good to me, I appreciate the doctor's contribution to my health. I don't thank God no. for healing me. People who yeah. are actually making the differences in my life are not getting thanked by proxy through mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. one of the biggest things that's changed. And it's one of the things that I find so fucking gross about religion, where it's like, hey, Take credit for nothing and don't give credit to anyone but God. Fucking yeah. What an yeah. asshole of a God. Okay, I do have to yeah. make one correction. One thing that has changed, I go to drag shows now and they're so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Do it more. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. I haven't been yeah. to one yet, but it's on my bucket list. Hell you need yeah. to go. They are so much fun. <laughs> yeah. I know it's kind of hard in Greenville, South Carolina, but yeah. <laughs> Gotta love the Bible Belt. Oof. There's some nearby, um, I promise you. You'll find one within a hundred miles wherever you are. A hundred miles. Oh yeah. Gotcha. That's nothing. That's two hours that's two hours of driving. That's nothing. Oh, okay. That's not yeah. We live in a highway country. We're not blocked by moose and snow snowed out highways. Yeah. We're fine. <laughs> uh, I, I just have deer everywhere. <laughs> Andrew, it says you're undecided if you're an atheist or a theist. Ooh, I was afraid you were going to see that mm, yeah. or mention that. Uh, yeah, because yeah, when I called in, they asked me, and I was like, Ugh. I was like, just put undecided. And the reason I said that is just I feel like I have so much more exploring to do and researching of like information. And and I've talked to friends about this. I don't, I don't like the idea of clinging to a label or finding a label yet, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I get I get that because there's baggage that other people have put there. Mm -hmm. It is my mm -hmm. opinion that before anyone is ever a theist, they should be an atheist first. Um, because mm -hmm. atheist should be the state you're in until you have good reason to believe. In other words, it's you know, I'm not saying atheist means there is no God. I'm saying atheist means I don't yeah. currently believe there's a God. And that can change mm -hmm. in the future. This is why being an atheist yeah. doesn't mean a person's been a skeptic, doesn't mean anything else about them. It means at the time you asked them, they didn't hold a belief in a mm -hmm. God. I do understand being afraid of the baggage of the term. However, part mm -hmm. of me is also like, if we don't have enough people who go, even though it has a lot of baggage, I'm going to represent uh -huh. it and I'm going to correct people on the baggage, then yeah. it never gets corrected and people just continue to get abused with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I didn't know that, Andrew. I didn't know that you were undecided. But that's fine. I know. Everyone yeah. assumes I know. Everyone assumes I'm an atheist. They're like and it, and it's totally fine that people assume that. But, but Andrew, do you believe in God? Yeah. <laughs> mm, I don't want to answer that right now. <laughs> I just want to reveal to you whether or um, not you're an atheist. And I'm not saying you don't <laughs> not I'm not saying do you believe no gods exist. I'm saying do you hold a pot and you don't again, you don't have to answer any question that you weren't ready for. I'd love it if you would. Yeah. 
but <laughs> I'm not ready for that. Okay. So I'm not. <laughs> okay. That's fine. That's fine. Call when you are though. Okay. Yeah. Andrew. You need to call back. Andrew. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Do you have more questions? Um, how much more time do I have? I don't want to take up too much of y'all's show. We'll make the answers quick. <laughs> okay. Are you sure about that? I yeah. don't know. I'm capable. <laughs> what the fuck is that, Andrew? No, go on. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. So Heavily I think offended. earlier in the show, you were talking about kind of like overcoming that fear of hell. And you're like, oh yeah, like, I've deconstructed this. I would logically thought about this. I don't believe in this anymore. I also don't believe in hell, but because of religious trauma, I still have those like really ingrained fears. So like, what advice would you be for me? And like, I'm already in therapy dealing with it, if that helps, but, mm, but what, because to me, like the religious trauma, like trauma is not logical. It's stored in our limbic system, the emotional part of our brain. So like, mm -hmm. no matter how much deconstructing I logically do, it doesn't seem to help. Hmm. Do you want to go first? Um, well, for me, it was, I, I, it's hard for me to answer that because I was really afraid of, okay, well, as a Christian, mm -hmm. I wasn't afraid of hell. I always was so convinced that I was going to go to heaven, but I had a fear that if, yeah. if I stopped being a Christian, I would go to hell. And like I shared earlier, um, that quote and that realization um, made me just stop believing in it. And it was really quick. And I feel like I'm super lucky um, about that. And I, mm -hmm. I haven't actually dealt with it. Um, and I know that that's not always the case, obviously, for everyone. Um, I think mm -hmm. being in therapy is is a really good um, thing mm -hmm. to be doing. Um, is your therapist familiar with religious trauma syndrome? Um, because that's something that not all therapists are familiar yeah. with. And I think mm -hmm. you should probably be with someone who knows kind of what you're mm -hmm. dealing with because you don't want to have to explain yeah. so much of your mm -hmm. history. Um, in order to get the help that you need. And the other thing that I think is you, it will just take time as well mm -hmm. um, to get, to get over that. Um, because I mean, there are times once in a while where, where I will just be like, Oh my gosh, did I make the right decision? And it's yeah. just kind of like a, a yeah. wave of like just this anxiety. And then I'm like, okay, just let it pass. Just like any mm -hmm. other wave of anxiety yeah. that I get. Um, and mm -hmm. then you just have to rationally think about it. And I find that during that uh, deconstruction period, uh, when I was going through this, I read a lot of books about like how the concept of hell came to be. I read um, that book by mm -hmm. Bart Ehrman, Heaven and Hell. I really just sort of came, mm -hmm. I wanted to know how that all became a part of our belief system in, the, in Christianity. And once I found out how it, did become part of it knowing the genesis of it really helped me just be like mm -hmm. oh, okay this is all ridiculous so um yeah. maybe just diving into just how that even became part of church doctrine would really help because mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah. i uh so i i get a lot of help so there's sort of stuff you can do that are just general anxiety exercises that i think actually cross mm -hmm. over very well here uh, and one of them would be yeah. when you feel that thing pop up, it's very useful to tell yourself what it actually is because it isn't, it mm -hmm. isn't fear. It's adrenaline. Uh, it's not anxiety. Yeah. It's adrenaline because mm -hmm. you're programmed to believe a certain thing, a certain action, a certain thought or whatever has put you in danger, mm -hmm. literal like life or death yeah. danger, except for that it's going to hell for eternity danger. Uh, and it's useful to say mm -hmm. to yourself, this isn't anxiety or this isn't fear. This is adrenaline. I am being flooded uh -huh. with adrenaline and I can now choose what to mm -hmm. do with that adrenaline. Uh, you don't yeah. have to, you mm -hmm. don't have to use adrenaline to run away or you don't have to, though some people like to run when it, when it happens. Uh, I pace a lot in, in those scenarios mm -hmm. or I start working on a project and I go like, yeah. fuck yeah, I've got all mm -hmm. this adrenaline. I'm going to go kick ass in the wood shop. Um, but yeah. then it's also useful to address the actual thing. I'm having mm -hmm. this response 
because I believe in hell and then keep going. Mm -hmm. And I, or because I'm yeah. worried that I'm going to go to hell. I'm worried that I'm going mm -hmm. to hell because, and then answer that because, because I was told mm -hmm. in church, I would go to hell. They told me I was mm -hmm. going to go to hell in church because they wanted to be able to control me more. They wanted yeah. to be able mm -hmm. to control me more because, and keep doing the becauses until mm -hmm. you get to this arbitrary point of where you've connected the initial fear to this final thought mm -hmm. of, because it's a scam, because it's mm -hmm. all yeah. to control me, uh -huh. because it's whatever. That thing that releases mm -hmm. the initial thought from the fi by, by addressing the final one. Mm -hmm. It's a very useful yeah. exercise. Wow, thank That's you for that. Really good I, advice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I lied earlier, that. I'm a fucking genius. I know you are. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, you'd all be very surprised at the things that evade my mind every day. Uh, Andrew, anything else? Any others you wanted us to hit before you go? Um, Speed round? I don't think so. I, I've taken up a lot of y'all's time, but yeah, thank y'all um, for answering my questions. And I was so excited to see Stacey on your show. Yeah, thank me you, too. Andrew. I love you. Me too. <laughs> I love you too. Thanks, Andrew. I don't love you yet, but maybe one day. I don't know. Andrew's amazing. <laughs> oh, okay. It sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. Andrew. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye. That was fun. Aww, that was fun. Here I was waiting for like, I used to go to church with Stacy, her real <laughs> name, by the way, and her address, <laughs> like she was trying to dox you or something. I, I had a bit of a like, oh my gosh, because my first boyfriend in high school was named Andrew. So I was like, I haven't seen him in like forever. So I was like, wow. does he know? Just like, what? <laughs> Don't be Andrew. Don't be Andrew. Yeah, right. Yeah, but like, then when you said South Carolina, I was like, okay, no, I, I know who this is. <laughs> okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank, so just a little, a quick couple of announcements before we move on. We do still have more calls and the super chat. Stacy, how are you on time? Do you have a hard stop? I am at a, great. Okay. Oh no, I I told my family just go do whatever. I Forget no I exist limit. for the evening. Yeah. Uh, bye. <laughs> awesome. Well, so uh, announcements for the upcoming week. Really great shows to come. We have Matt Dillahunty tomorrow on the Hang Up uh, with David Tamayo. I believe is the way you pronounce that correctly. Uh, he was the, he's the, oh man, I won't remember the name of it off the top of my head. It's like Freedom From Religion Foundation. In fact, I think he sits on the board of FFRF, but he also runs a specifically a Latin American skeptic community organization, an NPO. Uh, all that I'm sure will be on, covered on tomorrow's show. And then uh, Dr. Ben, finally Dr. Ben, totally Dr. Ben, no longer, no longer student Dr. Ben, uh, and Josie Caballero will be taking over the Transatlantic Call-In Show this Thursday. There's probably going to be some sort of extra programming this weekend, but that yet that remains to be seen. It wouldn't surprise me, though. We are still very much recovering from shit that the hack has done to us. Uh, Matt and I will be back on Sunday for the Sunday show. On Monday, Forrest and Erica will be back for Skep Talk. So I imagine I will I will plan to be awake very late that night. Uh, they just go on. They do. And then next week on Hostility, I will be joined by Erin Lewis, um, who is an amazing... Uh, I feel like I like what she communicates about sex positivity. She's written a book about her former life as a stripper, but then also sort of weaving in these themes of, of uh, becoming non-religious and all of that. And so, yeah, I, I definitely... I'm looking forward to that show as well. And then for people who have been asking when the Seth Andrews show has been rescheduled for uh, May 9th, it'll be the following Tuesday. So that's all, all to come. Ooh, exciting. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Somebody said bump Stacy and bring Andrew. And I said, fuck no. Stacy stay. I'm just kidding. No one said that. I was just trying to make oh. it. Oh, <laughs> I mean, so. I love Andrew. I mean, Seth Andrews. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Andrew's, uh, yeah, Seth is great. Seth is great, yeah. but but yeah. tonight tonight is Stacy's night. Okay, thank you for not you haters. Me. I was so excited. <laughs> no, I would never. I would never. I would. This is an asshole thing to do. Hey, can oh. I bump you for a different public figure? <laughs> Fucking Seth. Seth. Seth's oh. great. Also, he's very understanding and, mm -hmm. and was happy he's to wonderful. move it around. Uh, all right, let's pop into the next one <laughs> then. I'm going to, I guess I'll just go in order on who's been waiting the longest at this point. So we've got Arlindo in the UK. Arlindo, you are on the line once again. I heard him. How's it going, Jimmy? It's all right. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. 
Not too bad. How's it going, Stacey? Stacey's still there, isn't she? Yes, hello. How are you? Yes, I, yes. Uh, my, my wife's called Stacey, by the way. Jimmy knows about that. Yeah, oh, I mean, hello. I forgot, but I believe you, if it makes you feel better. <laughs> I, can't rem- I can't remember names for shit. I really can't. It's... I, I, I read Matt Dillahunty off of the list over here. I was like, and I'll be back on Sunday with Matt. Yeah, it's 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 a bad. I told you all, lower your intellectual expectations of me to zero, and then I will impress you. Anyway, Arlindo, go on. Yeah, sure. So um, this is an interesting concept that was expressed by Max Tegmark. I don't know if you know him. He wrote a book called A Mathematical Universe. Mm-hmm. And basically... Uh, the concept is the following. So the universe is vast enough and it could be infinite, but there is only a finite number of ways in which matter can be arranged. So therefore, it's plausible to find an Earth analog with a replica of our population and the same history by coincidence. How would the religious community react to such coincidence? What are your thoughts on it? If we made such discovery, how would religious people on earth, in fact, how would most people react to it, do you think? The the funny thing is, is I addressed this point with my father, but not on the basis of the universe being that large. I know I've heard this before him. In fact, I think I heard um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, but I think he was talking about the multiverse too. I don't know. Anyway, I had presented to my dad the idea that the multiverse uh, hypothesis looks pretty well supported and there may be some way to at least mathematically prove it one day. And if that is the case, it would mean that there are potentially an infinite number of universes where our exact existences are happening identical to how they're happening um, here. Like it's just literally the same thing. Maybe one atom in the universe somewhere turns left instead of right, uh, but it can be so far away that it doesn't really affect everything that's happening on our side of the universe. Uh, and that that could be, and I asked him, I was like, if that turns out to be the case, still you would believe in God? And he said, like, no, that actually wouldn't change a thing for me, wouldn't bother me. If, if anything, I think that makes more sense because uh, he doesn't have a good reason to defend it. That's just the way religious people do it. If, you know, you beat them with evolution and they go, evolution's not real, evolution's not real, evolution's not real. And then one day it's like the church actually acknowledges it's real. Yeah, I know it's real. It actually makes our point better. It actually defends religion more. I know all that stuff I was saying about how it couldn't be true. And if it is true that we evolved from monkeys, this was Elder Gene R. Cook. I was just reading one of his stories to people on uh, R. and Ra's show, Elder Gene R. Cook from the Mormon Church basically brags that it's a made up story, but he says in the story, he was confronting Mick Jagger on a plane and Mick Jagger (laughs) believed in evolution. And he talked about, well, if evolution's true, then there's no morality and everything is permissible. And and there would be no God if evolution's true. Meanwhile, now the Mormon church largely accepts that evolution is true. And yet Gene hasn't come out to clarify his position and go, you know, well, I was wrong. And yet you hear all of these people go, it actually makes more sense. Now, like you add, yeah. a, I know all that stuff. Where it makes more sense, and so somehow yeah. they would turn it into like that. Just shows how huge God is. That's how powerful God is. That when God yeah. tries to only make one planet, He accidentally creates an infinity of Earths. It'd be some stupid shit yeah. like that. It's like He's so powerful. Yeah. Just one Earth once could He couldn't only do one Earth. He had to fucking. It, it it would make less sense than the current DCEU does. Uh, uh, all the bat, yeah. all the they current iterations it, of yeah. Batman and shit. Um, it's um, yeah, they always try to adapt their belief to uh, new discoveries. It's, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? Yes, it's it, yeah. Now this thing that debunked this stuff we were saying couldn't be true because God exists. Now it now it actually supports us even more. I I love that one. <laughs> Stacy, I feel like you must have seen in your lifetime of being a, a fundamentalist Christian stuff like mm-hmm. that happen, where it was like maybe not maybe not evolution's true, therefore we're more correct, but like this proof of evolution actually proves young Earth creation, but much more than it proves evolution or things like that. Yeah, but I just I didn't believe it because I just it that cognitive dissonance was like kicking into high gear and. I just thought, well, no, the Bible says it went like this, so I have to believe the Bible. And I just, even though, you know, like 
there was evidence of it, it was really hard to grapple with. And I would just yeah. kind of chalk it up and think, oh, I'll just get all the answers when I'm in heaven. I don't need to figure this out. It's not important enough for me to know right now. Oof. Which, it, does, that yeah. like, does that make you resent any part of your past self where you're like, I'm so yeah. hungry for knowledge now. Yeah. The fact that yeah. I ever thought it was fine to say, I'll find oh, out totally. after I'm dead. Like, yes. what yes, a sad. Because, because I know that I was like taught certain things in school that I, I remember saying, okay, I'll learn this because they want me to learn this material and I'll just tell them the answers that they want me to say or give or write. And then as soon as I did those assignments, I just pushed the information out of my brain because I felt like I was being a bad Christian, even at like 12, 13, 14 years old, I felt like I was sinning yeah. by doing these assignments. So I would, the whole time I was like, I'm so sorry, God, I'm just doing this because my teachers need this work handed in. And I would do it thinking they're all lying to me. So whatever. And then I, I would do it, learn it, and then just forget it because yeah. I thought it was all a lie. So now I'm like, oh man. So when I would go and tell my husband, hey, did you know that this and this and this happened? He's like, how did you not know this? Like you were taught this in school. And I'm like, yeah, I probably was, but I just pushed it out of my brain the second it was put in there. So that is a sad yeah. thing too, that I feel like a lot of religious people's experience in school was like I mentioned, I test well, I'm good at remembering stuff short term and then completely losing it. It's I can mm -hmm. I can memorize a chapter of a book the night before I have to take a test on the chapter of the book, but then the moment the test is over, it's basically gone. Maybe a day or two later, right? right? You know, maybe I could maybe I could take one more test on it, but I, and I feel like some of that was developed as a child of I have to go to school and my parents have already told me from a young age, we're not planning to pay for your college, so you better get good enough grades to get scholarships. That was a real conversation right. we started happening when I was like seven. Uh, <laughs> like, start now. Um, so you almost have this like, okay, there's information out there and some of it I need to get through school, but, but it isn't important. It's not important like what I need to learn in church. And so now I've grown up and I can tell you everything I learned at church, but I can tell you very little of what I learned at, mm -hmm. in elementary or, or I mean, math and science stuff, I'd say because of yeah. then what I pursued in college a little bit after, but, um, yeah, most of the other stuff is just gone because it didn't, it didn't at that time in my life, it, it didn't have the no, priority anything. as it entered yeah. my ear to be put in a good part of my brain. It, when there was yeah. good parts of my brain left back then. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, with church too, you're getting told the same stuff over and over and over every yeah. single week. And with school, you're learning new like subjects. So it's you're building. hard to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But with church, you're literally learning the same stuff again and again. Which so I wasn't sick. ever satisfied with in church. I, I would say compared to your average Mormon kid, by the time I was 13, I knew much more of the doctrine than adult, mm -hmm. most adults did. And part of that's because I had yeah. a father who was the equivalent of clergy uh, uh, in Mormonism. Right. The whole thing works very differently, but Mormons will understand when I say like he was bishop and branch president several times and then parts of state presidencies okay. at least twice, but then also a part of the CES system, the church education system. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it was like, it, it, it makes me mad to think back to clearly when I was a kid, I was mm -hmm. able to grasp and build on concepts, but I prioritized the wrong ones. And so right. instead of like now being you know, good at coding or something like I'm, I have half of a talent at piano because I had to learn that for church. Other than that, all of that shit's just again, gone. It's just <laughs> yeah. out of there. Anyway, Arlindo, yeah. uh, I hope that answered your question. I think yeah. you have one more question though, based on my notes. Yeah. I was going to say, um, are we alone in the universe? Uh, and I'm, I'm only asking this question because when, when I was a kid, I remember watching Contact and Jodie Foster says at the end, well, if we're alone, uh, then it would just be an awful waste of space or something along those lines. Sure. But then when I read um, Max Tegmark, he also happens to argue in favor of the idea that we are alone in the universe, funnily enough, or at least in our observable universe. 
And uh, if, if that's the case, then we're truly special. And he claims that we are probably the only technological civilization uh, in our Hubble bubble. That's, that's his terminology. And he cites the work of some Oxford scientists. And, and basically, these scientists, they, um, their calculations, uh, you know, they, it yields probabilities that range over hundreds of orders of magnitude. And they take everything into account, abiogenesis, uh, simple life symbiosis to form, you know, complex uh, life forms, eukaryotic cells and that. You know, the likelihood of all of that, and it's not looking good. So they, they basically say there's a good chance that we really are the only intelligent species in the universe. I think they're nuts that for taking that position. Yeah. Legitimately... <laughs> I think that's an insane position to take. And I'm sure there are people like, yeah, but they are, you've said you're stupid and they've just shown that they're smart, but the yeah. kind of like, so again, there's a difference between universe and observable universe. I would be surprised if we are the only life, even in our observable universe. And then there's a difference between life and intelligent life. Uh, and so yeah. first of all, what we can observe right now doesn't mean that we aren't part of systems that other life couldn't observe. You know, just because we can only observe really with confidence our own solar system doesn't mean that there wouldn't be other solar systems with advanced technology that observing us yeah. is about as easy as it is for us to observe Mars. Um, our observable universe doesn't have to be somebody else's observable universe, which like does it, it, it both doesn't, Un undermine their actual point, but I feel like is important too. Uh, and it's it's also so the universe is old. The universe is super old and it's super large. And so there's the potential that there have been many intelligent species, but that the thing is so large that we've missed each other completely. And in fact, that's even possible for like other planets in our. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the amount of time was, but. I remember reading a thing about Mars could have had civilization as advanced as Earth has now. And as long as that had been, the, the as long as they were wiped out, I want to say the number was like 2 billion years ago. Don't take this number as the important part, but there's a number. As long as it was that civilization was wiped out 2 billion years ago, every proof, every remnant of that would be gone. It would be undetectable that it ever existed there with any modern day, at least method of detection. Um, and so, yeah, I remember, I remember like even we can't even rule out that there was once intelligent life within our own solar system, but because of the age of things, because we can't even really conceptualize how long billions of years are, we can't even conceptualize yeah. the distance in our own brain, how physically far away the moon is, let alone other planets. And, uh, uh, not naturally anyway. We obviously, we've got, you know, things that you can see and it's like, well, if you can imagine this, I love though, when they do a scale thing where they go like, okay, imagine the size of the earth. Now take that and times it by whatever. And you get this planet. And it's like, humans can't actually yeah. imagine the size of the earth. So you've already begun <laughs> yeah. with a very weird proposition in the first place. Um, I think it yeah. would be wild <laughs> to think that we, there's all of the ingredients for life are, all over the place in the universe. Um, we don't know yet what our abiogenesis event is, but we also don't even have a good definition of intelligence because I feel like on the basis to say, you know, and to, to emerge as an intelligent species, humans took this evolutionary path as though we would know that that's the only evolutionary path that ends in something we would call intelligence, um, that, that our oh, intelligence would great. resemble something else's. It's just wild to me. Yeah, by the way, I, I should mention, I don't want to misrepresent anyone, but the scientists from Oxford that he cites, um, they, they basically take a very pessimistic view, you know, it, because it's based on so many, um, uh, how do I say, so many uncertainties. So if they are not sure, they literally go for zero chance. And if you see what I mean, you're either going to take a, a you know, a, a pessimistic view or you're going to take an optimistic view and they if they are not sure whatsoever because they say you know the, the great equation it doesn't have much substance as as people like to think mm -hmm. so they literally go right we're not sure so it's 
we're going to say it's zero, zero chance. And then it just leads them to that dreadful conclusion that we're alone. But I just want to say as well that Max Segmark doesn't say that we're alone, that we are the only ones. He says we are the only ones in our hubble bubble. But right. if you go Google Foxes <laughs> far enough in space, like many, many Google Foxes, then you're very likely to find an Earth analog. So that would be that would probably be part of another Hubble bubble, if that makes Right. That makes no, sense. and I, I get that. And I get why that there's, you yeah. know, there aren't ra even faint radio signals that you would think that you would see. Again, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that that those civilizations for sure don't exist. Uh, but there's things where it's you can say pretty confidently that within our Hubble bubble, our planet yeah. doesn't seem to exist a second time with our current technologies in a way that because we can't detect the way what we would have detected from. But again, like our Hubble bubble isn't it's small and large at the same time. Like we are seeing some things that are uh, uh, millions and or billions of years away as far as. And so for all we know, yeah. you know, 500 light years away, there is a fully advanced civilization that got advanced like we did within their last century. And we're 400 years away from finding that out because there's no other sign of them otherwise. Um, maybe not. Yeah. I guess we were probably throwing radio signals they, into they, space they, before 100 years ago, but not 200. Yeah. I think the problem is they, they place emphasis on the Fermi paradox. You know, where are the uh, all the spaceships? Space should be riddled with alien spaceships. And yet, there's when you know we find nothing. Um, well, so, sure, but, again, but also, what percentage of what percentage of the low uh, of asteroids in our own solar system have we found? It's like point zero 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 one percent. We know about general giant fields of them, but there's all kinds of stuff. They can't even eliminate the possibility of a world-ending asteroid being within. It's it's. I don't remember what the time period is, but there is. The possibility of, I, I, again, there are things I'm bad at remembering. Let's say it's a year. I think it's like a month. But that you, they could discover tomorrow the asteroid that's only a year away from hitting us. Uh, but I think it's actually about, yeah. uh, like, the universe is dark. And the idea that if you were a spacefaring civilization, first of all, you would have had to have beaten the speed of light, which means you figured out how to harness energy in a way that you can make... Um, you can make engines capable of compressing space because space can move faster than the speed of light. And so now you have a technology yeah. that's one, we wouldn't even understand how to be able to do it. All of the energy on the earth wouldn't be enough to actually fuel an engine like that for any significant uh, distance, of, uh, a significant distance. So their technology would have to already be way beyond our understanding. And so to go to a level of technology that would look exactly like magic to us and go, how come we're not detecting these people is also fucking stupid. Yeah. And, and really they would only be close enough for us to detect if they wanted to be physically close enough. If there was something That's, over here for yeah. them to do, what is there over here for them to do? They probably have go-karts on, on their planets. Like, or, or more fun. Things. Yeah. <laughs> Than we have. <laughs> yeah. They they have all the and, Pokemon and games you know, already. Right? Yeah. They've all been released. <laughs> it's done. Yeah, it's done. It was a very, very interesting topic, Arlindo. I'm realizing we are totally diverting from uh, much, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. No, I loved it. You know, I, I don't want to bore you. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Thank it's nice to much. talk to you, Arlindo. I've seen you call in many times. So <laughs> take care. All right, guys. I'm going to let you go. Take care. Yeah. See ya. Take care, Jimmy. Bye. Bye. See you. Excellent. <sighs> bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm looking forward to these super chats. There's some pretty great ones. And then, okay, here's Ooh. how stupid I am. People are like, Jimmy, you're not stupid. I saw people responding to something in the chat, and I don't even remember what it was now, but it looked like they were responding to something that okay. a caller had said. But whatever they were responding to, a caller hadn't actually said yet. And for a moment in my brain, I thought, oh, maybe they're ahead on the show and we haven't caught up to it yet. Like my whole <laughs> concept of time and space 
reversed and I forgot that I am alive and real and not just catching up to my own content for a, it was a brief moment. And my brain went, what the fuck? What? You got to stop. I I started, I started using uh, cannabis products recently and I was like, the fucking shit was that just, I glitched out and y'all are like, Jimmy's not stupid. That happened people. Uh, That's awesome. (laughs) That's something I would have thought to be honest. 100%. I think this next call you'll be better equipped for because Mormons aren't really afraid of demons very much, but that was a part of your past, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Dennis in Poland, Dennis, you've been waiting very patiently. Uh, Dennis, you are on the line. Hey there. How are you doing? Just fine. How are you? How are you? Uh, Great, great. First time here. Uh, Very excited to be here. Uh, You actually entered part of my question really, really well before about the uh, the um, adrenaline part. Oh, because, cool. Uh, let, let me just quickly go through my background and, and what I wanted to say. Sure. Uh, and but then we can talk about space if you feel like it. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so uh, I've been brought up in a Christian, uh, Christian country in Ukraine. I'm Ukrainian. Uh, uh, it's a really deep part of our actually uh, uh, nationality because that's how basically church was kind of re- rebellion against uh, co- communist atheism. So it's really pain in the butt to talk with people in Ukraine and try to convince them. Anyway, uh, I've been a religious background. I don't think I've ever believed in God actually, and don't think I ever felt it really deeply. But I definitely believed that the demons exist because from like four years four years old i every month i've been on like max as, max, uh, mass exorcism places and it's re- the the belief in demons i think it's really deep in my in in me still even though for years now i don't believe in god and actually you guys uh, helped me crystallize in my head that i am actually an atheist because i i don't believe in god but in cool. demons, I still, when I go through the like dark corridor, I feel like somebody is watching me. And for a long, long, long time, I couldn't like fall asleep without covering all the way to my head because I felt like someone is gonna attack me. You know, a demon is gonna attack me. So, and I've been meaning to ask you, how do you deal with things like that? And if you maybe, uh, if that ever goes away, because I feel like I, I, I don't think it's like it's not debilitating to me right now anymore but i still feel it and i was wondering if that ever goes away mm-hmm. stacy go first yeah um i can totally relate <laughs> to that um i used to believe that there was a demon attached to everything um and i i was afraid of always bringing demons into my house i was afraid of people bringing demons into my house um mm. so i i really understand that fear um, and that was something that I only really got rid of probably about four years ago. I stopped, um, believing in that, but I stopped believing in, I didn't stop believing in demons, but I stopped believing in sort of their power, um, mm-hmm. four years ago when I was still a Christian. Um, I kind of deconstructed just the supernatural and spiritual warfare while I was still a Christian, but, um, now as an atheist i just don't believe in the supernatural at all so just not believing in a supernatural period um i don't deal with that struggle anymore but i i really used to so i i can understand that kind of that paralyzing fear at times um I I don't know if you are like, I really think therapy is a really good thing for people to, to go through. Um, And I really liked what Jimmy said about, about adrenaline. Um, I've actually never heard that. Sorry, the sun is shining in my room and I'm putting it on my head. Um, Do you know what's funny is I, the, the phrase I used to use a different version of it. I just changed it. The whole version of this isn't fear. This is adrenaline. And I got that from listening to an episode of Smart List with the lead singer of Duran Duran, of all people. Oh, wow. That was the way hmm. he worded it. And I was like, all right, well, that's how I'm saying it from now on. Forever. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I really like that. But um, yeah, I used to, I mean, I didn't believe that you could be, as a Christian, I didn't believe you could be possessed by demons. I just believed you could be oppressed by demons. And I was 
constantly like praying over my house and anointing my doorposts with oil and like mm -hmm. telling demons to leave. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with that at all, but it's very like witchcrafty if you think about it. Um, so again, what helped me with all of this is just going back to how these things came into play, how we started believing in these in the first place, um, uh, just the genesis of all of these ideas um, and just knowing, oh, okay, well, this is something that was created from this mythology or was adapted from mm -hmm. this belief system from, from like, thousands and thousands of years ago before the Bible was even a thing. Um, that's really what helped me. So now I don't have, I used to be afraid of like the devil. Now I don't believe there's a devil and I can even watch videos on like the satanic temple and learn about the satanic temple and it doesn't scare me. And I, now I find it fascinating. Um, I want to know more about it because I would have been freaked out to watch a talk given by R and Ra at the Satanic uh, <laughs> Temple Conference, and now I'm like, oh, that is so interesting. Okay, there's literally nothing to be afraid of. So maybe just kind of confront your fear by facing it head on with those things. So. Yeah, I've so I've got a couple of uh, of pieces of advice that are pretty quick here. Yeah. One, um, go to YouTube and watch some stage hypnotists, and I know that sounds mm. like not related, but. You need to see people being stupid because of their expectation of supernatural forces to be mm -hmm. real and how far that can be taken. Uh, and I feel like that helps disillusion a lot of people from, you know, when they've seen exorcism and how that can make it feel like, mm -hmm. well, this weird convulsing thing this person was doing, surely they wouldn't just do that as an act because they're expected to. And then you watch a bunch of people in their 20s and 30s get on the ground and pretend to be chickens because they're hypnotized when, uh, uh, if you're not already familiar, maybe first watch videos on how those things f actually work, uh -huh. how stage hypnosis works. It's all, it's all just social expectation. Nobody really believes they're a chicken that you just don't want to be the person who fucks the whole thing up. And there's lots of demonstrations of this thing at work. Like, um, uh, you know, you can watch, uh, um, uh, there's one experiment they did where they put a person in a room in a waiting room and then a second person comes in and then a little bell rings of some, just like goes boop. And when the bell rings, that person stands up and uh, the other person does. Uh, and then when the bell rings again, they sit back down and then they let another, another person comes in. And when the bell rings, the two people stand up and then the bell rings and sits down. And it literally only takes two or three people before the first person who, who is the subject of this experiment starts also standing up and sitting down, not knowing why, not being explained why that bell should matter, and yet they're doing it. Um, and then you can start actually bringing in more people who aren't in on it, and they start doing it too. And by the end of it, you've got 50 people in a room, 45 of which have no idea why they're standing up and sitting down, just that the rest of the room is doing it. Um, mm -hmm. I'd recommend watching that. I'd also recommend watching some content from a guy called Darren Brown, D E R R E N Brown, uh, and watch his like exposure of how mediums work, how, uh, there's one called how faith healers works. That's really good. Um, then there's also videos of, of him as part of like ghost hunting expeditions where you have him, the skeptic mm -hmm. with a true believer, uh, being the partner. Uh, and you can see him talk about exorcisms and stuff at work. And I think that I actually think for a lot of people, yes, there's therapy for sure. But I think you get released a lot. Kind of like, um, Stacey, you were talking about, you read something about something and suddenly you, it all clicked. I don't remember what the exact example was. but Was, but it, was it the the quote that the life is a spark between two identical no, voids? I think, no, it was was when you were, it? I think you were saying you read about Noah's flood. Oh, yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. And how yeah. like as soon as you had that information, it was just all, mm -hmm. it, it, it yeah it knocked over so many other dominoes. And I, I genuinely yeah. think Dennis, that you've got right now, you're in a situation that you're just trying to figure out how to knock over the first domino. It's just kind of tricky mm -hmm. to do that. But once you mm -hmm. do a large amount of that fear, when you watch other charlatans do similar stuff, a large amount of that fear falls away, but it doesn't go away completely. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I watched I am legends in, uh, uh, in, 
theaters. I am legend in theaters when I was a teenager. Um, and then I'm driving home and my brain's expecting to see these fucking rabid vampire men, you know, <laughs> running around, like looking, looking around for these vampire men that I just watched on screen. Your brain sucks in a lot of ways. Everyone's does. I mean, uh, and so they're not going to go away completely, but I think that you will, um, I think it will break you free of, of a lot to see parallel, similar things, uh, and, and how sort of, it starts to become almost obvious what's actually at work. And you'll start to think like the people who made you f afraid of demons in the first place are just sort of sad douchebags. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's probably yeah. the direction I would go if I was you right now. Yeah, yeah thanks. Definitely. I will check out these, uh, these things that you mentioned in this, in this deal. Uh, one thing I wanted to say, uh, yeah, I, I read about these things and with my brain, I understand that, but, you know, body reacts how it reacts sometimes. Sure. But one thing that I wanted to, to mention is I remember as a child, uh, I was under like, uh, I never was influenced by it. So I never even was considered by religious people that I had anything in me. And anyway, but I remember one dude uh, put like his hands on me and then he actually put his fingers into my into my ears and pressed and it made me react as if as people who, you know, who uh, are influenced by this hypnosis, let's say, uh, react. And I was like, holy shit, this is a scam. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember thinking that as a, uh, as a child. I wasn't saying like as a scam, but it, this is not real, at least yeah, for me. And I was, yeah. it started, made me think about it. Um, it's fascinating to see how our, our uh, social mammal uh, nature comes out in different ways. For sure. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah. Uh, one thing that I ah, I had so many things I wanted to mention, uh, but I don't want to take too much time. I wanted to mention this one thing still sure. about space. Uh, there is a really cool uh, a paper by Robin Hanson and others. It's called uh, If Loud Aliens Explain Human Earliness, Quiet Aliens Are Also Rare. It's awesome. And in the, it introduces the idea of grabby aliens. And uh, basically, he he explains it in, in with Lex Friedman. He has a talk. It's really interesting. But one of the cool things that he uh, that he says, a grabby aliens is basically he's saying that we are on a uh, on a um, cast, uh, like we are about to make that choice. If we're gonna expand and change things around us, or we're gonna stay quiet and stay on our planet and not do anything. And uh, uh, one of the things he, that he is saying that. If we are going to make that choice and we're going to be grabby, there probably also are lots of other civilizations that are also deciding to be grabby, and they that probably did that choice earlier than we are with it. And but right now they are probably expanding towards uh, towards us at the significant fraction of the speed of light. And when we're going to see it, it's going to be like a sphere of light going at us at like half the speed of light or like. Uh, one uh, like three fourths of the speed of light and we're gonna have like three uh, maybe a thousand years to react to that and then we're gonna be under their influence basically that's one of the cool things that that he says and the, the other one is that uh, another assumption that you could make is that we are actually really early early in the universe because so far yes universe is old but so far in the universe the universe was really chaotic place there was uh, supernovas all over the place giant yeah. black holes spewing stuff and it the the, the actually the um, uh, um, life maybe didn't have that much time to evolve. So maybe we are actually really really early, and we are lucky in that that we are not uh, under influence uh, from some other uh, civilization. Anyway, I think it's uh, understood that, that like humans and or, or planet Earth, we're definitely early on Earth. Like it's within 500 billion years that life could have evolved on Earth that it or that life could have started on Earth that it did. So for sure on Earth it did. The question is whether or not are we early compared to others? Because, you know, we we emerge roughly what, like eight billion years into the universe's uh, existence um, mm -hmm. with life. Roughly not we is. not we emerge, but life emerges <laughs> like eight billion years in. So how long did the first planet have the conditions necessary for life from the start of the universe? It, did it start happening after 4 billion years, 5 billion years? Uh, obviously, there's some portion of the beginning of the universe where nothing clearly was happening anywhere because everything was so dense and it hadn't even really began to expand at first. Um, but 
Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, if I keep talking like this, people will think I'm not stupid. So we'll let it move on. <laughs> I know very little about this, but I can I can make it sound like I know something. Yeah, I don't know much about this. So <laughs> yeah. Did I say billion? Did I say five hundred billion somewhere? I, yeah, I would have meant million. Five hundred million, not yeah, billion. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And another interesting thing is that there is a limited amount of space that we actually go can get, even if we start expanding right now at, right now at the speed of light. So yeah. it's also like a little bit maybe sad from some points of view, because if you wait, like every, every second we wait, it limits our amount of space because of the expansion of the, of the universe. Yeah, it's a little bit sad in some ways. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, the whole thing okay, is sad because even if we achieved immortality, we'll still die one day. The universe, <laughs> the universe demands it. You can't, you can't beat entropy. Anyway, thank you, Dennis. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk with you guys. See ya. Nice to talk to you. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Good night. Unless we discover how to also move at minimum our consciousness to other universes which haven't yet, uh, basically achieved heat death. There's, yeah. you know, maybe like it matters. The worst part is, is if humans figure out like medical immortality, we'll miss it by like four minutes. It'll happen within the next century or two. And we'll have like relative we'll to what gone. then would follow as far as human history. It'd be like, man, yeah. those poor fuckers who lived in the, yeah. in any century after like the, well, really any of recorded yeah. human history, it'll feel like they just all barely missed it. It emerged yeah. so fast. <laughs> yeah. So sad. Uh, so sad. Anyway, uh, I said we'd hit the, are you still good on time? We're still good? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'll go all night. Uh, not really. I've only got a couple more lined up and then we'll do super chats. Casey in Hawaii, you are on the line. Oh, hey, thanks for taking it. my call. You are welcome. How are you doing? I'm going to fix your name tag here while you, uh, while you set us up. Um, so, I was listening to Stacy's introduction and she was talking about how COVID kind of put her on the path to deconstruction. And it was really, really similar to my wife's um, story. She uh, had been going to church most of her life. And um, I've been an atheist for as long as I can remember, but she was really upset with how, uh, especially people of her church and, and uh, similar Christian faiths were anti-vaccine and, you know, wanting to go to church even though they were supposed to stay home. And it just really disgusted her, the whole situation. And because of that, she stopped going to church. And from that point, she was able to deconstruct a little bit. Um, but whenever I talk to her about it, she gets, like, kind of defensive and, like, doesn't want to talk about it. And I'm just kind of wondering hmm. if you have any suggestions on how I could broach the topic without her feeling like I'm being pushy. So what, like, do you know what parts she's deconstructed already or she just like, has she stopped going well, to church altogether? When I, she stopped going altogether. Okay. But mm -hmm. when I ask her like, you know, what do you believe? She, she basically, well, like, I want to see my mom again. And so I just, I, I got to believe mm -hmm. because I, I want there to be more after this. And right. I'm just like, isn't this enough? I mean, we have a really good life. Um, it's just, it's, it's weird. I don't, I don't really know where she is because whenever I bring it up, she gets kind of, she just doesn't want to talk about it. Well, I know that for myself, like, I, when my husband would talk, not, not that he ever tried to talk me out of my beliefs, but when he would start to point out certain flaws or contradictions that he would see and he just wanted to talk, I would shut the conversation down immediately. Um, I couldn't have those conversations and um, it, it felt really scary. So she might like if, if she's not ready i wouldn't push her because like i remember how i felt and it just it didn't work i had to come to it on my own um so i mean if she's if she's already questioned you don't know really what she's 
like thinking right now. Um, but I just, I wouldn't push her just because maybe you're ready for her to commit to something. Um, I know yeah. that people, they do want to believe in something, especially when they miss loved ones and they've been promised they're going to see the, that person again or those people again. So that would be something really hard for them to, to give up. Um, so yeah, I just, I just know that if you push her, she, it's not really gonna help because it never did for yeah, me. Well, um, and I, I, I definitely try not to push her. I mean, I've been an atheist since I was probably 13 or 12 when I actually read the Bible mm -hmm. and she knew I was an atheist when we got together. So it's, it's not like it's ever been a problem. I used to go to church yeah. with her sometimes just, you know, to spend time with her and my daughter. Um, and my daughter was really into church when she was going, you know, cause that was, you know, all she knew at that time. But you know, the last couple of years, since she's not been going to church, I've been having conversations with her about skepticism and she likes to listen to the line with me. Um, she's 10 years old, but she loves, especially Forrest. She loves Forrest, by the way. He's and, great. And Jimmy too, People love course, to tell me when I'm on air how much they love Forrest. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that's, that's why I said that, because I knew you'd love it. No, I love Forrest, too. <laughs> why wouldn't I? She'll love Forrest. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, she just, she really enjoys the, the conversations you guys have, and I, I'm trying to expose her as much as I can without also pushing it, you know, because she's got to make her own decision. But, mm -hmm. and my wife doesn't have a problem with that. Like, she's totally cool with me talking to our daughter about it. Um yeah but my wife doesn't want to talk about it so i'm just kind of yeah kind of stuck because i want to be there for her as much as i can and not be pushy but i know she mm -hmm. has questions and i know she's struggling with where she's at but how do i be there for her without pushing it you know that's, that's right. where i'm at well she i mean you could just tell her that you could just tell her like i don't want to push you but just know that i am here when you if you ever do want to talk or have questions, like that's, that's what I'm here for, like as your husband. Um, and yeah. I think just hearing that she, that, that could just make her, that, that could just bring her the comfort that she needs um, for when she is ready to, to come and talk to you uh, with, with her questions. Cause I know that I, before I even said anything to my husband, it was a couple of months where I was wrestling with it because I really thought if I say this out loud, then it's real. So I have to be really sure that this is what is taking place um, inside. Mm -hmm. And I mean this because if I say this, there's no going back. Um, so that, that could be something that she's, she's just, you know, struggling with right now. Um, and then once I did, then we were able to have some amazing conversations. Um, but I had to just get to that point where I was like, okay, I have to tell you something. I don't believe in God. <laughs> and he, his response mm. was, okay, I don't think you're wrong. Just take this really slow because he didn't want me to like have some sort of crisis and be like, okay, wait, no, I'm unsure. And yeah and then go back and then be like okay what do i believe so just knowing that you're there um that's that that could yeah. be something that she just needs to hear right now rather than rather than saying isn't this like I, and and you're also trying to help her i understand by saying isn't this life enough but yeah as a woman uh, she probably is like that's not what she wants to hear um she could be taking that kind of the wrong way like so just tell her more i'm here for you when you're ready and... yeah so that's good i it's it's weird too because i've asked her you know like if she ever wants to go back to church you know and mm -hmm. she said she doesn't think she ever will and yeah. then at times she's even said like she doesn't think she's a christian anymore but then anytime yeah. i try and ask her about it it's just like she puts up a wall yeah it's it's scary Okay, I, I mean, slightly alternative, but then and some people like there goes Jimmy giving 
saying, forget it, have the conversation now, but I'm not saying that. <laughs> K uh, Casey, have you asked, yeah. have you asked your wife to schedule a conversation and say like, hey, this is a thing that every time it comes up, it feels like maybe because it's spontaneous, it's not, the conversation's not going very well. Is there any possibility we could say That's like, not the right time. Next, next Thursday at 7 p.m. after we go out to dinner and a movie or whatever, we come back here at 7 p.m. and we sit down and if between now and then you want to open up your notes app and put in like a list of like boundaries, like I don't want to talk about this and this specifically right now, but if, if I know that and then we could have a conversation about God and where your religious beliefs are, I feel like it would bring me comfort to know where you are, that the mystery is, is some of the thing that's like haunting me right now that, that is, is yeah. uh, making me worry for you and also making me worry about, you know, my contribution to your happiness and, and what we should be doing. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm, I'm definitely, I'm on the side of understanding both what Stacy said and being like, oh, that's a good approach. And also understanding myself and going like, boy, that's a, that's a big piece of information to, to not know when you're going to get to find out. Um, mm -hmm. and so if, if, if the question, instead of starting the argument or starting the conversation is when can I find out, um, and here's why I want to find out and be honest about your own, like w the things that you want comfort in from that conversation, but also the fact that a big part of it is that you love her and you want to be mm -hmm. able to have that shared between you, um, I don't know. I think that's yeah. another potential approach, but maybe I'm. Well, I know she's she's also missing the community no. of church. You know, like that's that's a big sure. thing that you know you lose when you don't go. Yeah. And I I actually joined the Hawaii Humanist Society's like meetup group. Um, I haven't gone to any meetings because my wife doesn't want to go. Like when I told her I joined the Hawaii Humanist Society, she was like, "Why? It's just why would I want to do that?" Well, well, they've just been a hate on church is like no it's it's not about not church it's just people who want to help other people it's not anything like church it's just a community it's something that we can be a part of that's yeah. not church you know to me like usually and in those she didn't want that in those scenarios maybe it's a little bit confrontational but um i i would probably say like all right let's say you're right let's say i say i i hope that we can go and do this together and, and we go there and it turns out you're right, that the full two hours is just people bashing on churches. Won't we be fine? Like we come home and then you go, I actually hated that. I hated that it was just two hours of bashing on churches and I don't want to go back to that community. And then you would know for yourself and I would know for myself. And so then we would never go back. But wouldn't we yeah. also be fine? Like if yeah. that is what happened? Right. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think you're going to go and I think you're going to have a good time. And you're going to meet people. And yeah, there's going to be people in various levels of deconstruction. There's probably going to be people there who still kind of believe and, and, and are missing church and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's what you're going to see. And somewhere it's going to be between the two of us. It's going to be some amount of church bashing. You're probably going to hear somebody make fun of a church they went to uh, <laughs> versus some amount of just community and people wanting to be able to gather together without having community. And I, I really feel like the worst case scenario is you feel like you wasted two hours and we waste two hours on Netflix once a month, at least like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I waste right. two hours on Netflix yeah, yeah. On, more often than that, but um, I don't know. Again, yeah, I not, I don't mean well, to make it Call sound Duty, so confrontational. So. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. You know all about wasting time. I love video games too. <laughs> not times. Yeah. I, I, I don't get much time to play them right now, but when the new elder scrolls game drops, you won't see me for a month and I will have nothing out. I will get nothing out of it except enjoyment. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I don't know. I, well, I, that's, that's good enough. I don't think it's unreasonable to just ask like, Hey, what if, what if we just go, even though you think that's the, what's going to happen. And, and all I'm saying is I don't think that's what's going to happen and I'm not going to go. I told you so, but if, if we come back and your assessment is that you were right, it was two hours of church bashing. I'll never ask you to go again. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That doesn't seem yeah. crazy yeah. to me. Well, it's, it's weird too because I actually I saw that the American Atheist um, doesn't have a, a chapter leader or president or whatever for Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I, I mentioned something like, oh, I should see if they need help or something like that. And my wife was like, absolutely not. What if my family mm -hmm. finds out? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, your family knows I'm an atheist. 
They're like, yeah, but what if they find out you're like trying to promote it? And it's like, who the fuck cares? But <laughs> yeah, I mean, at a certain point, weird. she's going to have understand. to address whether or not it matters more what other people think of you than what is true or not. Uh, and it sounds like that's something she's putting off right yeah. now because she is afraid of judgment from family. And you should be yeah. empathetic to that. that that's not it. something that you should just of course. dismiss, obviously. I'm, I, even though that's not a consideration in my life, I understand why it would be in other people's lives. And if I had a partner, I would make sure that they knew I will go out of my way in as much as I can to not expose you in that way to your family. But I would also like mm -hmm. in return, right. in as much as you can, for you to help me live my truth my yeah. best self yeah. and my best self means i i need some of this stuff i need some community mm. i need to be able to um to commune with people who have been abused by religion and i'd like it i'd like you to be a part of it because i love you and you're the you know mm -hmm. I, there's nothing i want you to not be a part of right. in my life i i yeah i think that's well that's all tight well and that's why um the line is so important for me and other people like me because man when you were down for those two days i was freaking out i'm like what am i gonna do <laughs> me too to be listening to the line yeah <laughs> yeah I, I only felt a tiny tiny fraction of your pain yeah but trust me we felt it yeah yeah no i appreciate that and I, it, it was it was a bad day <laughs> it was a bad bad day uh bad yeah. few days obviously but the actual yeah. hack day was yeah pretty horrible uh, anything else, well, Casey? We, we get community from well, uh, we get community from you and the people on your show, and so I appreciate, I appreciate what you guys do. Yeah. So, Thank um, you. We've yeah, turned into this being silly. compliments in my direction, so if that's everything, we'll probably uh, take the last call <laughs> yeah, here, no, buddy. That's why I said that's why I ended with "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> Thank you, Casey. I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, yeah. Have a good Have one. Have a good one. Bye bye. Aww. Huh. <clears throat> Shut down those compliments fast. I just, I have to say, I, I, I could probably never say that to you as much as that's your, your thing here. Don't ever expect me to say that. I just feel that now I really want no. you to say it to me and no. this will become a theme of our relationship going uh, ongoing. Oh, really? It's going to come up. Yeah. That's for sure. I thought of it all day today. I was like, no, I just, that, no, no. Unless but, you actually like piss me off, but I don't, I don't want you to. I don't want that to be a thing. First of all, I love fucking myself. I'm better at it than anyone I've ever met. Okay? So you don't have to worry about that. You don't want me to go fuck myself? I mean, you sound okay. like the Mormon church right now. Oh, gosh. They don't want me to fuck myself either. Second, <laughs> it's now a term of affection. It's a all term right. of affection masked with the language of an insult. Uh, and it makes me impervious. Like, now, if in fact, if you don't, say it in its affection form if that means that if i ever hear you say it i should assume that you're saying it in its non-affection form and it creates a system in which it's only an insult whereas i'm otherwise impervious in the comments if i see a person genuinely say go fuck yourself i have no idea they've done that I, yeah. to me it's now oh this sweet person who's probably out there and seething just like oh, i wish he would hang him so like just Oh, I hope this is the comment that ends his life. That could be what they, and yet they write, go fuck themselves, go fuck yourself. And I'm sitting there going like, thank you so much, Rod Bender 46287. <laughs> so kind of you to say oh that. Oh my goodness. Anyway. Oh yeah. In no, your own I just, time, I hope to hear. Okay. If you have to whisper it. Well, that, maybe one day, like, hopefully, like hopefully we cannot, like, it's my dream to one day, like, get to meet all the people that, I do shows with in some form or yeah. another. So come to LineCon for sure. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's going to okay. happen right now. We're hoping April of next year, but we should, we'll hopefully solidify that, uh, this summer and have like, okay. yeah. Yeah. Come down with the other Canadians. There's let me know more. Y'all got, yeah. <laughs> Y'all got stacks and stacks on stacks of Canadians up there. That'll be coming. Just <laughs> jump on the, just jump, jump in with them. Yeah, no, it would okay. be great. It'd be great. Uh, one day I want it. I, yeah. If we meet in person, um, and yeah, just, just, that would be f fucking hilarious. Okay. All right. That's I'll the just moment. Throw you it, I'll just say it when, when you least expect it. How about yeah. that? 
Yeah, there we okay. go. Okay. I hope this happens. I hear myself suddenly. I Why don't. was I? Other than I just yeah, you've got how headphones. I hear you. It wouldn't make sense for it to be coming from your end. Nope. I don't know why I was hearing myself. Uh, all right. Well, Emily in New England, you are on the line. You are the last call of the night, and then we will do super chats. Emily, you're on the line. Hello. Um, hello, everybody. Hi, um, Emily. I, I am planning on starting a little bit of a business. Um, I went to... Uh, art school and I'm pretty good with crafts and things like that and as Jimmy knows the art business is being consumed a bit by AI and so things are tricky um, so I've been looking at you know what kind of things sell and uh, um, I was wondering I haven't started this yet I'm still in the planning phase um, and I and when I do have some less problematic um, uh, target groups, uh, you know, Final Fantasy XIV players and, you know, comic book fans and Dungeons and Dragons fan, uh, you know, fans and, um, you know, just people who really like sculptures and drawings and things like that. But um, you can make a lot of money customizing things, customizing a chess set or something or... For Christians or making, you know, certain jewelry that they may like, um, you know, horoscope necklaces, uh, chakra beads. I don't believe in any of the woo. I'm an atheist. Um, I like to think that I'm skeptical. Um, I, I would, I know I would be a hypocrite for putting those things on the store. No, you wouldn't. But. <laughs> Is your question basically, it would, it would, be a would I to... judge you if if you started selling stuff that people yeah. are likely to use for their wooey or religious beliefs? Yeah. yeah. It's because fine. It... Uh, it, you, it, it's, if you start holding seminars, it is coming from your end for some reason. How is this happening? My end? Yeah, for some reason yeah. the echo is, is coming out of your input. I don't know how. Okay, I don't think it's going now. I did put a noise gate on, so that might have helped, but it seems to be good right now. Nothing Wait. <laughs> did you refresh? By accident. Good enough. Right okay. now, it's it's not happening right now, I don't think. So we're just going to okay. call it a win. Yes, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So look, you live in the United States. This is a capitalist hellhole. There is no ethical consumption <laughs> under capitalism. To tell you the truth, I don't give a fuck if you eat at Chick-fil-A and people are going to be mad I said that. If you <laughs> like Chick-fil-A, go eat at Chick-fil-A. It does fucking nothing. Your individual, the boycott has failed. There are other boycotts that have failed that we still uphold for some reason. But that's, that's a larger, more like people who are pretending to be activists because they're not eating chicken sandwiches. Um, great. <laughs> the activism is now what you don't do. Uh, as far as the things you do do, if you want to sell a cross, you want to sell a crystal, why the people are buying that crystal is not your fucking business. And some of them, it'll be for religious reasons. Some of them will be, that's a fucking pretty crystal. Um, if you then participate in promoting that religion, then you suck. Uh, and, and to some degree, it might even be okay to suck. If it's, a mm, no, not participating in the actual scam end. If you're literally trying to make money by convincing a person to believe, it it probably doesn't. It, it probably still is is too far beyond the line. But I'm trying to think of like something that's still sort of sucky, like saying like, I don't know, people who believe in this think that this mineral does that. I can't mm -hmm. speak for it. That's sort of the thing that's well, like skirting the line, but meh. Here's, here's something sucky that my sister really wants me to, to, to add on because okay. when I was younger before I became an atheist I was a pagan for a while um, a, a Wiccan because I was really good at cold reading I didn't know that's what I was doing I just thought I could do tarot really well and I could get good answers and I could just do shit if I were to put on like 
entertainment purposes only. And then when I gave something back to them, it would have their chart signs and all that other stuff. But it would be like positive psychological reinforcements and like coping strategies. Emily, if you're and asking me personally, if you want to sell decks of cards, do that. The moment you go beyond it, I actually find the atheists who participate in tarot kind of gross. Even as they go, well, no, we've come up with a skeptical version and it's still a secular version. And now it's about introspection. But yes, we are supporting this multi-billion dollar industry. And the fact of the matter is just like the people who go, well, I don't really believe in astrology. I just find it very interesting to reflect on. So I'm participating in this predatory system or whatever, mm -hmm. where you're deluding yourself. Again, if you want to live for me, you, this is a decision for you to make. So I can say all of this and, and you still make the other decision. It's not like I'm perfect. So I'm not going to tell you just because you did something I don't think you should do that you're bad or wrong, even if I say I think this thing is wrong. If you want to participate from the level of what you do with this is on your own, fucking great. But if you don't think that the people who are come in with their soft version of this is the secular version and it's fun to reflect and then they become more and more obsessive about it and it literally is an actual demonstrated gateway, not a fear-mongering thing like a gateway drug, but it actually is a gateway. If you don't think that happens, you're deluding yourself. It happens all the fucking time. Um, mm -hmm. Don't don't participate no, that, in the soft that, that secular version of the religion. And that's that's kind of why I have been resisting it. My My older sister's are they think I can make a lot of money doing it that way that I could um, I'm I'm physically disabled I have some mental illnesses I have a lot of money trouble they're like this can get you out of it mm -hmm. and and it can participate in ruining I, other people's lives <laughs> like that's the yeah, thing Emily I, I get it You've, and that's where I'm yeah that's it, where I'm I'm I feel gross about it and yeah I, I, I don't know if, like, selling a cross on Etsy, like a ne cross necklace, is going to slowly inch my way to do that, or if it's, if it's a separate thing entirely. I mean, that's the only Does a thing you sense? can be responsible for, is making sure that you don't let yourself slip down a slope and go like, okay, well, since this was so well, did so well, I'm gonna justify something that is unjustifiable. But again, I think there are clear limitations within everybody else's freedoms. You, I don't care if you supply crosses or even tarot decks, but if you are influencing other people to either strengthen their faith or give them soft ways to participate in a religion that is likely to lead to not necessarily all, but many of them to go further with it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you are participating negative. I think you'd be doing a negative thing that, that I can't justify from the position of uh, I've, I've at times in my life been extremely poor and extremely sick and anything to get me the money for medicine is not what I would have, you know, there has to still be lines and limits. Um, and so pretending to yeah. be Mormon, if that would have gotten me, you know, taken care of wouldn't have been acceptable. Uh, mm -hmm. So, it, it, and, and it, that's trigger. that's why I've I've resisted. Like, I I do collect tarot because I, I there are some that have beautiful artwork on them. Um, so I have decks, and like my sisters have told me, like, sit on the corner and you know get get cash. And I haven't I haven't done it. And if you want to do that, become a um, magician. Sometimes you don't have to pretend the powers are real. <laughs> I got I have I have multiple decks of cards. I can see three from where I'm sitting. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna make money sitting at a thing with a deck of cards, just use a regular fucking deck yeah. of cards. Blow people's minds with that. But yeah, because here's here's the, here's the other thing I'd say, Emily. You have a craft. You want to know if you can supply use your craft to supply people who have poor beliefs. I think that's fine as long as you're just supplying. I I don't care. Like that, that wouldn't bother me at all as long as you're not participating in strengthening their faith. But I would suggest to you that the really noble thing you should do is with your craft, make something that you call one thing and then say it's, it, but it, it, it's actually something else. For example, mm -hmm. I'm a woodworker and I am willing to supply, uh, you know, I probably won't be making crosses, but I do make Christmas trees. But the thing is, is that my Christmas trees are butt plugs. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you want to have no. some fun with it, you disguise something as something else. 
and uh, and that'll that'll counter any bad vibes. There you go. Make some oh, yeah. crystal I, butt yeah, plugs. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely. I have. I definitely have. So I um. I have. I went through the Lesser Key of Solomon, and I got all of the sigils for summoning demons. Mm. And I make them into little buttons and cha- keychains that you can walk around with. Um, and, and I they give you like the information of like what their teachers are and stuff, and like little like satanic-y things and little. Um, that's not to promote because it doesn't work. It's it's no and no one really believes it anymore. But it's more of like a like a like a fuck you sure. kind of situation. Sure. Um, yeah. Do you? Like I, an atheist stuff I have. I have secular stuff in the works. Um, I just, just, I just don't, don't cosplay wanna... religion. I, it's such a cringy fucking thing. Seriously, I have friends who do it. Uh, uh, I think most of them are past friends. But I have friends who yeah. in the past have done the tarot thing. And they're like, well, no, but it's because I do da, da, da. Even though it's all rooted in this and a lot of the associations and the imagery and the actual people I'm financially supporting when I buy these decks of cards and whatever fucking else. And it's literally just like, holy fucking shit. You would not abide this from other religions that are less obscure. Fucking yeah. just and so stupid. And there's other ways. Like, I, I buy my tarot directly from the artist. And like, so you're not indulging with that and and um if you're if you're an author or you play dungeons and dragons um there's certain spreads that tell you like the background of the character and their anxiety and their future plans and their talents and then you can use that to create a character but like if you're going to use it to describe your insights like that's not going to actually help just go see a therapist man. i would be researching your supplier if you're not if this isn't decks that you're manufacturing i'd be making sure that you're researching your suppliers because some percentage of people who get the deck will research where the deck is from probably to buy more of them from the same artist and if that artist is uh trying to, pr- to convert people to that mm-hmm. version of spirituality that wouldn't exactly be dope either Oh no! I uh, I I went to art school with some of these people, so cool. I was there while they were making their decks. Sure. So I, I got a copy. So. Emily, um, you live in a capitalist hellscape. Do your best. Don't uh, <laughs> don't don't do anything that will make that'll affirm a person's faith. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes they say things affirm their faith, but they're. You know, like the people that are like, actually, watching your show made me a stronger believer. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> either that's true and you're stupid or it's not true and you're a liar. And I, luckily, exactly. I only think you're can a liar. I, can I try to rephrase just to make sure that I understand? Sure. Um, so don't actively participate in anything or cosplay. If you have supplies like a candle and they need a particularly colored candle or something like that, that's fine. But if like, don't, don't engage, I guess. Is that kind of a, yeah. what you, what you mean overall as a summary? Uh, that, that sounds, yeah, mostly, mostly consistent with what my own personal values would be and yeah. where I would go. If I, if I heard you were had a shop and it was like, yeah, the owner doesn't really believe, but there are things here that people can buy. Uh, I wouldn't care for the most part until it's like, and the ho- and the owner's hosting seminars and yeah. whatever else. And, and you know, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> here's the section of oils to take instead of vaccines. You know, mm-hmm. at that point, you're you're an evil sack. No. Yeah. Then, then I would be a devil. Um, I, and I, can I give just a really quick news news thing? Yeah, well, let's go quick. We are going to wrap um, up here. Just- very, very, very quick. Um, Japan recently, there's a news article that Japan has um, made certain forms of child indoctrination, child abuse, and neglect. So if you use hell to threaten children, um, if you donate so much money to your church that you have trouble financially supporting your children, and there's a few others um, that now count as child abuse and child neglect. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would be in favor of similar things that are just independent of whether the religion is true or not are child abuse. So, yes, if you are not, mm -hmm. if you are not, if you are giving up elective income, if you are electing to give up income at the detriment of the well-being of your child, for sure. Um, yes. Yeah, threatening children with hell and making yeah. them afraid of literal torture would be abuse. Uh, I, I'd be in favor. But it is obviously, that's one of those lines that... It's hard to walk, and we're never going to pass laws like that in America, not in the near future. We literally have most of our religious laws are, uh, we're protecting your right to abuse person A in this way under the guise of religion, because God says mm -hmm. that's when the abuse is okay, because there's not really a, any justification and otherwise. Your, Anything that's actually and good, you can... kids by denying uh, blood transfusions and medical treatment yeah. and vaccines yeah. and Yes, but those those parents right shouldn't just have their Japan. kids taken from them. Yeah. They should also, ind independent of having their children taken, they should also be put in jail. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I agree. But it's a step in the right direction for Japan, so I thought I'd give you some good news. Um, thank you guys so much, and I, I apologize for the longer call. Um, I really appreciate your advice. Yeah, cool. And uh, you know, go fuck yourself. That makes me Thanks, feel Emily. so bad every time I say that. But, but go fuck yourself. But doesn't it feel <laughs> and, a little good, too? I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. Um, oh, I'm But Stacey. you're wonderful, too. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Emily. Take Have care. a wonderful Bye -bye. day, and thank you to the moderator. Yep. Ah. Thank you, thank you. And the Oh, it's high. Oh, kind of, you don't have to. Okay. You, it's it's not like the Oscars. You don't have that's to thank everybody for it. However, we will thank you to our mods today. Thank you to uh, uh, a margin was our call screener. Uh, what number was that one on? Was that on number two? Yes, it was. Uh, thank you to our call screener, Margin. Thank you to the mods. I know I saw I got cookies in there. I saw Dylan in there. I think that might be who our mods were tonight. But if I missed any, I'm sorry. Or some sometimes we have mods that are like, no, I'm there. I'm just not talking. Um, <laughs> in which case, thank you also to the invisible moderators, to the forgotten <laughs> moderators. Let me just uh, end the show over here in our call system so I don't keep getting charged by the goddamn minute. Mm -hmm. Last week or the week before, um, I came in and I saw the balance on the call-in <gasps> system and it had gone way down. And I had forgotten in a rush to get from my show to Aaron's show, I had forgotten to mm -hmm. end the show and left the call open and ended up paying oh, no. for like two days or <gasps> at least a day, like 24 hours oh, gosh. per minute. Uh, yeah. Oh gosh, <laughs> the best! So great. Uh, yeah. It was a silly, silly mistake and very mm -hmm. annoying. But awesome. mm -hmm. it happens. It was. It's. It's. Yeah, a whole thing. Uh, yeah. We're gonna do you good for super chats. Yeah, I know you said you're good. Cool. We'll go. Oh, I'm good. Uh, any super chat of five dollars or more, if you send it in, we it will be read on air unless it says something ridiculous, like it contains slurs or something. But other than that, uh, we're not afraid of much. And I don't know. It also just supports the show. It helps make sure that we can do shows like this where we introduce you to somebody new. Uh, uh, shows off. Sometimes we do shows where it's somebody you've you've not heard of or maybe you've only seen in a couple of places. Sometimes it's we do big shows like the Seth Andrews show where we're going to be talking about his book of ghost stories. It just makes sure we can keep doing shows like this, though. It is worth noting that uh, in the not too distant future, this will become a floating show, somewhat like Cause I Wanna, uh, where it will happen not necessarily on consistently the same day each week because the Tuesday night slot, uh, I think I think Seth is actually the last guest in the Tuesday locked in slot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the following week, the 16th, is when we will begin uh, Dying Out Loud with wow. Dave Warnock. I love Dave. Dave's the best. Uh, so he that is... is that is all to come and will be exciting. But yes, yeah, send in those super chats of $5 or more. It makes all the difference, especially right now Ooh. where we are still recovering oh. and and what I would call unfucking our channel <laughs> from a week of garb. It's so much mm -hmm. more than just two days of like no direct revenue from the shows. It's, it's how it hits the algorithm. It's how the algorithm's the big one and then there's all of the work to do subsequently to unfuck all of the descriptions before putting videos back to public and then now i'm reassessing right. even how much i want to still be public um yeah it's all it's all the thing it's all the thing anyway starting with <laughs> do you want to alternate on these do you want to go uh, you, reading them sure 
Awesome. Do you want to go first okay. or second? Uh, I'll go second. Okay. Four ninety nine from Baffa Metal. Hey Jimmy, do you like metal? Sorry if that's too tangent tangential to the discussion. <laughs> okay. I think you meant tangential. A, okay, so there's a story for this one. So uh, uh, Baff is uh, my co-host uh, on Secular Soapbox on Wednesdays, uh -huh. and during one of our streams, someone sent in a, a super chat question, and it had the word tangential in it, and just because it's live and you're reading, I said I mispronounced it and said tangential. And uh, uh, yeah, he has not let it go. So he had to make sure to get me. And he, he said he would never let it go. And clearly he hasn't. So yeah, I had to say tangential on, on the line. So when you finally whisper, yeah. go fuck yourself into my ear, I will whisper <laughs> tangential back to you. That's perfect. <laughs> I love it. So. <laughs> for watching it yeah <laughs> yep every opportunity and i've gone on another show and then he also played the clip of me saying it so it's just become yeah. a thing now so yeah i do like some metal uh i, yeah. <laughs> I the, the the answer i have the metal i listen to the most uh will not satisfy most metal heads they in fact will say like that's not really metal <laughs> but there's an artist called leo i think his last name's like moricello moricello or something like that and he takes existing pop songs and and redoes them as metal songs. Uh -huh. And there's something I very much like about that. He's also just incredibly talented. But yeah, I really, I, I most of the metal I listen to is like, you know, I, the other day I was getting real down on his like, toss a coin to your witcher, oh valley you can't. He had a, he had a, a witcher a parody, yeah. He also, uh, his version of, um, what is that song? called da, da, na, na, na. feels feel good feel good incorporated okay. uh his version of that's like really good uh his version of american idiots really good he's just good <laughs> he's just good uh africa okay. is oh man boom 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 uh it's 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 <laughs> tremendous anyway i like i like that that's awesome this one's gonna be really easy there's no message oh. with it to read it's just thank you from the Caribbean skeptic. He's another friend of uh, Skeptic Haven. Hell yeah. Thank you to <laughs> thank you to Stacy's friends who are coming here to give me yeah. money. That's yeah, awesome. Thank you. It's, it's too good. Uh, let's see. Five dollars from Mark Fernkopf. Jimmy, build the coffee table in compromise. The final product needs to be entirely polygia black and in the shape of a Bigfoot silhouette. Uh I have learned to not inject myself into disagreements between couples and will therefore be staying out of it. <laughs> That's um, probably a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you're <laughs> familiar with this. I've been hearing thing. about a coffee table, but I don't know the whole backstory. Shannon and Paul have a home together. Yeah. He doesn't yeah, okay. want a coffee table in the living room. She does. Uh, okay. And so far, their compromise has been a different type of couch. Um, wow. But it's it's become something of a of a of a war on the line. Ironically, okay. I think it's shown up other places too. But yeah. Okay. Okay. So five dollars from Hank says, "Here's five dollar reduces to say welcome to apostasy and go flaming f." you Jimmy it's fuck Art. yourself i think yeah oh, okay sorry okay. oh can okay. you not even read it to me <laughs> okay well it's not from me so welcome to apostasy and go flaming fuck yourself to jimmy but that I, is not the real one from me that i will one day say to you but i'm yes. just thrilled i don't know if i've ever heard you even to say the word fuck no i yet. don't think you have but i do say it yeah i don't usually say it on on YouTube. So <laughs> what I would have truly loved is if somewhere in the mm -hmm. background I just heard your sons go, ooh yeah. <laughs> like they're watching upstairs and Oh yeah, they they don't I think they might have heard me say it like once, but I um, kind of just yeah, not say it around them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying a bunch of people should send super chats in that <sighs> increase the number of times we hear Stacy say fuck tonight. <laughs> Uh, you know, granted, you're going to have to use abbreviation and she'll have to interpret that, but cause you can't just say fucking the super chat. I'm not saying right. people should do that because I'm not a bully. Right. But right. 
if but people did do channel. that, if that happened, yeah, I think she's would. saying she would read them. I would because it would support. Yes, I'm here to support the line. So whatever. I'm just saying, people. <laughs> This one's mine though. $20 from okay. too young to feel this old. I held on to being religious solely for my familial relationships till about two years ago. COVID and YouTubers like Jimmy, Aaron, Forrest, Erica, and Dapper were what finally made me feel like it was okay not to believe. Hashtag go fuck yourself, Jimmy. <laughs> so the thing I'll, I'll add to that is uh, mm -hmm. in talking to the person who was trying to figure out with his wife, the mm -hmm. thing is, is that there's probably a future, a few years from now where she goes, the best thing was finally living as myself and coming yeah. out and all of that. But the periods of time until you get there, there's lots of really painful moments and moments that um, the fear isn't unfounded because you've seen the way other people are treated when they leave. And so yeah. while most of the time, even if it, even if it sours some relationships in your life, you, you, most people end up feeling like it was worth it. But it's hard to convince a person on that basis. Like, it's kind of like anybody who's ever been so depressed that they felt like not living anymore mm -hmm. knows that feeling of like, I'm aware that if I just keep living, I will probably at one, at some point be glad that I stayed living, that I kept living. Yeah. And yet that doesn't help me right now in the moment. I don't yeah. care that I'm not, I'm going to be glad later. Mm -hmm. Like, and, yeah. and, and it's kind of that same approach where you're like, he, it's it's hard to convince a person of that that it's going to be worth it, and they kind of have to go at their own pace. Yeah, no, that's that's very true, and that's kind of what I was saying. Like, don't like I liked what you said to him. Like, maybe schedule a time because a, a conversation is important to him too. But also, yeah. don't push it too hard if she's not ready because she'll just retreat. And because that's yeah. what I did. So, it's, I get yeah, I get it. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. I, I was trying to come up with, with a middle mm -hmm. ground that satisfies and both parties. And I think parties. it was great because Thanks. his feelings are valid too. So My back is doing yeah. this thing that is so yeah. fucking painful. And that's why I'm wiggling <laughs> oh, no. around and I'm trying to move my ribs into different places. There's something going on and I, I need to get it checked out. But there's something going on between my spine and sternum. And I'm just, I work too much to go and take care of myself. <laughs> anyway, I'll get to it eventually. I'll go get, get me an x-ray. Uh, oh, good idea. Okay. I think this one's oh. yours. Okay, four ninety nine from Claire. Oh my God, I was probably very incoherent and weird because I was so nervous. Thanks, though, Jimmy and apostasy. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, you were not incoherent no. or weird, no. and I'm not no. just saying that as a nice host. I'm saying we have incoherent and weird callers from time to time. Mm -hmm. You were fine. <laughs> not weird at all. Yeah, you we don't have. Uh, there's there are callers that. Sometimes during the show, I will start texting people like, turn on the channel right now. This fucking, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to explain this call to you. This yeah. guy's talking about, he's cursing the teeth in my mouth right now. Oh That's my one gosh. Of them. Yeah. He's, he's, oh. and he thinks that because I'll probably need dental work again one day, I've already been very public about the fact that I am British. Uh, he thinks that because I'm one day going to need more dental work, that's proof of God that his curses worked. Even oh, though I was geez. having dental work before I ever heard any of his curses. Yeah, no. Yeah, good cause. Oh, your A follow-up 499 from Claire. Is there a word for theists who don't care what God says and choose not to worship him? That was me for a long time, but now I think I don't believe. I don't know if that... Uh, <sighs> You could have some sort of theistic apathy. You could say I'm a I'm a theist apathist. I don't know. Um, oh, yeah. I've not heard of a specific label of I believe in God and I even believe in the Christian God, but I don't care. I don't I'm not going to um I've never I've never heard of that. But you know, technically there are atheists who have said even if I found out the Christian God does exist, I wouldn't then worship him because he's evil. Uh, I doubt a lot of people um, are telling the truth when they say that. Like, if hell is the actual threat and that God oh, is actually proven to be true, you know, suddenly, yeah. suddenly God might become daddy for some of us. I'm just saying... Yeah. I never thought of that because I, I thought the same thing. Like, oh yeah, I wouldn't want to worship him, but... If that's the alternative. Right. Eternal torture. 
Yeah. And I yeah. mean, like, granted, worshiping someone for eternity is its own type of eternal torture, but mm -hmm. it's not as bad as like having your nipples constantly your twip yeah. off, twisted off or whatever, whatever happens in hell. Um, yeah. Or that. Twisted off for the record. Some of you are going to say, I'm fine with the twisties. <laughs> Fucking freaks. Just kidding. <laughs> no, no king okay. shit here. James Call. Oh, oh, this one's yours, I think. This is my, okay, $5 from James Call. Apostasy, nice to meet you, Jimmy. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I am so sorry, Why would Jimmy. you say that? <laughs> yeah, and here I said, I could never say this to you, but now everyone's making me say it. I thought <sighs> we were friends. We are. <laughs> it was uh, nice to meet you too, James. <laughs> Mustai31 says, nice to meet a new co-host with a great name in apostasy. Go Fergal Burgle Minergle Bur Burgle yourself, Jimmy. It's more of a oh. Matt Dillahunty reference, but I'll take it. Okay, I'm glad you read that one because that would be another tangential moment for me probably. <laughs> It's his made up word for when he's talking about okay. made up words or made up definitions uh, of like, if, you know, if you're going to say that's God, why not call it Fergal Burgle Minergle Burgle? Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, ooh, Canadian dollars. 666 from Nilly Wilf Wilson. Jimmy, when is your WWJD birch dropping? So what would Jimmy do? I that suppose would so. I would have to add yeah. like the other side probably would say GFY. WWJD GFY. Yeah. That'd be pretty good. <gasps> oh, okay. I would buy that. You'd take that bracelet? I would buy that. Rep that merch. Yeah, sure. Oh, and, and like get a hat too with it. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Your turn. Is this me? <laughs> uh, Sam Burrow says apostasy, the absolute coolest name. Also, hi from Australia. You. Love you, Jimmy. Oh, I couldn't read that one. <laughs> I, and thank you. <laughs> I didn't care for the compliment, but thank you oh. for the money. Okay. I really <laughs> would have preferred to go fuck yourself. Uh, I think I gla I think I just zoned out as I was reading it. I was like, here's <laughs> whatever. Okay. I'll start accepting $20. compliments after I get a genuine one from one of my parents. Okay, then you can Aww. compliment me. Okay, sounds good. It's never gonna happen. Uh, Twenty. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's another show, but. That makes me not happy. Um, Twenty dollars from Amargin. A margin. A margin. Or margin. A margin. A margin. Okay. Yes. Great show and first time I'm seeing you. Apostasy. Hope to see you more in the future. Oh, thank you. I hope to see more of Apostasy in the future as well. Me too, Jimmy. Thank you. It, it's been a good show. And again, I'm I not just saying fun. that. Sometimes we've had shit hosts. We've we've platformed oh. people thinking. They'll, this will be a good space for them. And then they fucking sucked. Oh, um, really? Oh. Yeah, that wasn't okay. you. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Don't worry. We don't. Okay. It's not anybody recent either. So a lot of people who are like, oh, my God, we've our vetting process has improved over the years. Every now <laughs> and then we take a risk or two. But some of those risks turn out amazing. Like um, I had never heard anything about the guy that uh, Forrest had on to talk about parenting that dude was amazing. Oh. One of my favorite shows of, of this oh, year awesome. so far. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, dude. Is this me or you? I've forgotten. That's you. That's Larry you. Fishman says, we need a tel radio telescope over 40 miles across to detect signals as loud as we currently use from Alpha Centauri. And we don't have one of those telescopes, one might mention. <laughs> so, yes, this whole this whole concept of, like, we, we detect all of or whatever... We know mm -hmm. so little, and it's amazing to me. And, and by, like, know so little, honestly, we know, it feels like we know more theoretically about the universe than we know, mm -hmm. than we have mapped of the universe. And, or, like, like, we don't have a clear image through a telescope of exoplanets, any exoplanet, or planets even in our solar system that are past Pluto. We don't have a, uh, I think we do have, I think Pluto and Neptune have had like mapped satellite level mapping done. Pluto's not a planet, Ooh. I know, but uh, there's, there's <laughs> at least two more planets out there that I don't even think we've 
like pointed the telescope exactly where they are because I don't think we're sure where they are. But there's at least two mm -hmm. planets in our solar system beyond um, Pluto. Right. And and we don't think about that. In our solar system, it ends like to our existence. We just walk around feeling like it ends at Pluto. It's full on planets out there. You're, yeah. you know, there could be aliens there. <laughs> exactly. Probably not. They'd right. be really cold, <laughs> really, really cold That's planets. True. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, but $20. life uh, uh, finds a way. <laughs> uh, $20 from Kathleen. Moncrief. Moncrief. Um, yes. Oh, Canadian again. Maybe the real God is the going and effing ourselves we did along the way. Maybe. Perhaps. Could be. Could be. There's no reason <laughs> why. I, I always, whenever people talk about like, if God exists, how come there's so much evil in the world? And I'm always like, that's the worst argument of them all. Like, that's not a good, if specific gods that people present that aren't evil exist, sure. But who's to say there isn't an evil God? Like, you know, just evil wouldn't, if a God could exist, he wouldn't necessarily have to be nice. No, exactly. It's a weird <laughs> thing people hold on to. This one, me or you? That's you. I don't keep track. Usually on the ones that I'm reading, I just read them all. Uh, but oh. I like this way where you tell me to go fuck myself. $20 from Rob Erwin. Bot Airmans and, uh, Bot Airmans. Heaven and hell. Oh, got it. Okay. And it's in the mail. Someone I care for is Christian, but is concerned that their mom is in hell. Will this book alleviate their concerns without feeling attacked? Conversion would cause them great loss. I will say that book's a little, nah, it's not really very comfort. I don't know. Look, there's a lot of Christians who cite Bart Ehrman. So mm -hmm. there's probably a decent chance that you're fine. However, the person's probably going to know your motivations. And so it might be more the gesture that's going to make them feel attacked than the contents of the book. Yeah. And only you can evaluate that relationship, I'm afraid. I wish yeah. I could. I think you should do it, for the record. If you're asking, should I do it? Yeah. But it might blow up in exactly. your face. Even when I told our, our former pastor that I was reading some, like, biblical scholars he asked me who i was reading and i said bart ehrman and his response was oh i was afraid you were gonna say that so <laughs> you know like I, I don't even find bart ehrman to be like like that confrontational or anything i find him to be very kind and 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 in his approach but yeah. yeah depending on what their preconceived ideas are of him who knows how it could go i definitely but, think dr yeah. bowen is the next I think he's like, you know, Bart Ehrman's getting a little older. He's only got so many books left in him. Uh, right. And I, I see Dr. Bowen is probably starting to fill in and be seen more and recognized more as perhaps the next yeah. wave of a, of a person yeah. like Bart. He's awesome. Yeah. yeah, though he's not specifically a biblical scholar. He's a, a doctor of Asamarian studies. I think that's yeah. correct. Yep, you're right. Yep. Always. Uh, oh, my turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always. Um, $20 from Ben. I'm, I'm not going to even try to say your last name. I'm so sorry. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Terpstra. I think. Don't generally. Okay. Don't generally get a chance to watch live. So figured I should contribute. Apostasy story mirrors mine quite a bit. Moses instead of Noah. Oh, interesting. Thanks for sharing. Great channel you have built, Jimmy. And go fuck yourself. So. The, the the Moses one's wild because secular Jews aren't aware that it's untrue. Uh, it's something I have found out. Like people who don't believe in God, still there are lots of people out there because of the cultural reinforcement. And I've noticed this specifically mm -hmm. among secular Jews that I've spoken to. They are surprised when I say like, you do know the story of Moses is impossible, right? Like, and they're like, no, I, I had assumed <laughs> up until this moment that Jews were enslaved in Egypt. Uh, in mass yeah. and that they had to flee. And it's like, nah, but I'd, they, first of all, like the type of Jew that was meant to be there didn't even exist at that time, not for another couple thousand years. And then if you want to talk about perhaps like people who, uh, it's just, a, yeah, anyway, I, 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 I'm about to go down a, a rabbit hole that will take another 45 <laughs> minutes That's and okay. we should wrap up. It's impossible. And, and it's, it's pretty surprising that like the story of Moses 
while people might go, well, as a believer, I don't believe that the Red Sea, like as a non-believer, I don't believe the Red Sea was part or any of that stuff. But mm -hmm. there are fully secular people who aren't aware that the whole story is bullshit. And it's basically it's one of yeah. our, our world's earliest attempts at racism. It was like the, the brown yeah. people enslaved yeah. white Jews, whitish Jews. Uh, mm -hmm. Like it's pretty fucking shitty, actually. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. It's a weird thing mm -hmm. that Noah, uh, people who have a much easier time letting go of Noah, but for some reason think that fundamentally the story of Moses has at least some significant truth in it. Yeah, maybe because of all the movies they made about it too. <laughs> right. Prince of Egypt was a banger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your turn. Is it? Yeah. I, okay. I, I just uh, read the last one. Sure enough. I just talked a lot. Uh, <laughs> 1999 from Megengo. Megengo? I don't know. Megengo. The eventual <laughs> logical conclusion would be you becoming impervious to all insults as new ones are thrown at you and become new terms of endearment. You will be insult immortal. Love what you do, bud. Yeah, there are some there are some super chatters who have been being very creative with the way they say go fuck yourself. And so we've certainly expanded <laughs> beyond just go fuck yourself as far as oh, terms wow. of endearment go. <laughs> Gotta get creative. That's right. Okay. 9.99 from Jessica M. Apostasy seems like a really nice person. Oh, thank you. Great show today. I agree with what the caller said about this being a community. Jimmy, go fuck yourself. Apostasy um, is you. a really nice person. Aww, and while you. if you go to her links right now, the top link mm -hmm. is the least active one at the moment. It's the one that I'm most looking forward to content on because Apostasy and her mother will be doing a podcast together where they talk yeah. about how they like left everything at the same time. And yes. uh, I think that that is awesome. And I think that yeah. I hope that by now calling it out on air, <laughs> she will feel oh prompted to do it more, more quickly, sooner. Okay. Uh, because I think the internet wants a mother daughter deconversion right. podcast. That is an actual yeah, new kind of content. We had, I didn't even talk about the fact that, yeah, my mom and I did this together. So yeah, yeah. come over and subscribe and stay tuned because that is on our agenda. I just, I, I'm a mom of three and I do this and I love doing all this. It's just, it's next on our to-do list of yeah. uh, things. I so I hope it is literally yeah. next. If it's not, it, it again, literally is. Okay. I, so, I'm not trying to be yeah. a bully, but you are not, um, but if you don't I do it, I'm going to beat know. you up. I just, I'm really good at coming on the shows and being, here's your link. I just don't know how to do any of the other stuff. So I got to. Oh, I will 1000% help you. So, okay. You know right. me now. And okay. I, I look, I'm <laughs> stupid, but when it comes to production, low key, I'm a God. In fact, it's hard to be okay. an atheist because I'm a production God. Uh, I will definitely okay. help you. <laughs> okay. That's well then we will get on it even faster. So thank you. <laughs> but thank you, Jessica. And. It's funny because people are all on board with the go fuck yourself thing. And they're like, oh, Jimmy, you should allow con, con, uh, uh, compliments. But every time I ever show any level of self-confidence in my production ability, suddenly the comments switch and they're like, oh, no, Jimmy seems real full of himself. Oh he gosh. liked himself for one minute. Fuck you. <laughs> anyway, yeah. is this me? <laughs> That's you. Thank you so much. Forty nine ninety nine from Nicole right. Erbson. And Nicole has been a, a tremendous contributor and supporter. Uh, and also, I just like her style, the whole... The green hair, the goth aesthetic, that's like awesome. super my jam, even though I look like a, an accountant who eats too much pizza. <laughs> um, anyway, in lockdown, I told my husband, I bet within a year I won't believe anymore, but I don't want to talk yet. Lots of people, lots of thought proceeded telling him that, and I felt guilty even thinking I'd lost faith already. Thought control, you know, so glad I'm mm -hmm. out of that. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Oh. I want to know what, if you're, if you still... This is going to sound weird. I want to hear Nicole's story, especially if, Nicole, were you a Christian goth? This like this aesthetic that I see yeah. in your profile photo, did you exist within Christianity in a similar aesthetic? Or was this something that you adopted after you had the freedom to do so? Do so? Mm -hmm. Because if, if you had the similar aesthetic, definitely shoot me an email with like the longer mm -hmm. story. Because this is... I would love to know your story. Yeah. It's very, yeah. uh, 
Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, Five dollars from Oh Really What the Fuck? Something really ridiculous, like a slur or something. I believe this is in reference to me saying, we'll read it unless you say something ridiculous, like a slur or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> so something ridiculous, like yeah. a slur or something. So yeah, perfect. <laughs> from the man, the Ooh. myth, the legend, $20 from Dave Warnock, Dave out loud. Here's to apostasy's freedom. Oh I oh love it. Gosh. I love him. I love I, you, Dave. I also love uh, Dave's <sighs> just Dave's the best. Dave, really I'm so excited for the launch of your show. I wish it had already started. Yes, I well, not know. already because that would have meant tonight didn't happen or tonight would have happened right. on a different night. I am very excited for it to happen and also excited for the future Tuesday shows. <laughs> yes, I can't wait for those shows. Yes. Hey. Oh, is, who's this? Who, oh, is this me? That, that <gasps> okay. is you. Yay. Okay, $20 from Skeptics and Scoundrels. This is um, Eric. Yep. I don't know if you know Eric. Okay, he's awesome. Yep. Um, Jimmy Not only do Stacey. I know Eric, I uh, okay. told Matt to Yay. book Eric on the hangout. Oh, yes, that's right, because you were in the after party with Eric. Yep. Yes, okay. Um, what a great way to spend the afternoon. Jimmy, take this money and go find yourself a new restaurant and enjoy a relaxing meal. You had a rough week, so enjoy yourself a little. Aw. I appreciate that very much. It won't be Chick-fil-A oh. if that makes anybody else feel better. Yes. Oh my <laughs> Just because of my oh, comments earlier about not caring if you eat at Chick-fil-A. Like we yeah. super lost that. I, I don't know if anybody keeps up on that. They are more profitable than ever. The only crisis they recently hit was a crisis of not knowing how to handle the fact that their traffic was too much, that the line was obstructing like the malls and stuff that they are in uh, or wow. that they are part of, that that they were basically becoming a nuisance to the parking lots of the larger <laughs> shopping centers. That's like their most oh, recent wow. crisis is that they are too profitable now. We just, wow. we really lost that one. That one is... I have never had Chick-fil-A because I'm in Canada. So sure. I've only ever heard about it and... And yeah. part of it is too, yeah. like the reason why there's a boycott against it is because people have heard about it. You eat at mm -hmm. places all the time that are yeah. as bad. Like yeah. how many of you very lefty people also talk about how much you love In-N-Out Burger or Whataburger? Mm -hmm. Just so you know, they're worse than Chick-fil-A, both of them. And yet, right. <laughs> but, and now, <laughs> now that you know, maybe you'll feel like you need to do something, but at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's there's no good luck. Good luck being an ethical consumer and having an Amazon account. Like, <laughs> yeah. It can't be done. Nope. Uh, Mistai 31 says helping to get apostasy recovered from purity culture. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy, as usual. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. the timing of how this one lined up. Five dollars from I Got Cookies for Stacy. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> so See, thank I, you for that. I, I don't think that I don't think that the way that that is written was meant to sound like a chicken clucking. It seems like it's being yelled. Oh, well, okay. Fuck, 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 fuck. There. Okay, that was better. That was good. That was good. That gave me I, chills. <laughs> really? A little. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh. I, I say fuck a lot to myself. Like I'll do something. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. But yeah, I can't. It's just, yeah, I do say it. Okay. I <laughs> never say it and I'm pretty offended of how much oh, you've been yeah, using I'm it tonight. Sure. Yeah, it's, I, I definitely don't use it to excess. Yeah. The other day, um, <laughs> it wasn't swear words, but Matt was saying something about, and he grouped me with him. He's like, you know, Jimmy and I do this for a living. So we don't say, you know, we've practiced enough to not say things like like and uh a lot. And I was just sitting there like, the do not group us. People are going to notice. <laughs> I say like and uh a ton. People complain oh. about it in the comments. Mostly the uhs oh. more than the likes. Yeah. Yeah. That I've got, oh, a, I have a Jeff Goldblumian uh complex apparently. I don't know. Oh, geez. Anyway, I just, I thought it was really funny when he was like, you know, and we don't just say like it all the time. And I was like, 
Oh, wait, I do. I can't <laughs> reply to what you just said without saying like or uh. This is the problem. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Hilarious. Just there. That was it. Yeah. Like, 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 like. <laughs> I say like a lot yeah. and I have, oh. I, I can remember, I can remember somebody making fun of me in Cub Scouts about it. So like before yeah. I would have been like nine years old. Yeah. Um, the last one I think we forgot to read. Ah, good catch. That one. Uh, oh. $10 from Jeff Edwards. Great show to you both. Jimmy, don't worry about the space-time brain fart earlier. A friend once asked me unironically if Kurt Cobain recorded a particular song before or after he died. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. That is funny. Oh, that's hilarious. That yeah. is funny. Good story. Okay, $5 from, oh, really, what the fuck? Just wanted to see if it would be read or not. Yep. Yep, it sure was. was. It sure was. <laughs> Only a few more. Get your super chest now in if you want to keep this party going. <laughs> Morgan Shooks is what I'm going to assume is the pronunciation of that because my first guess seemed mean. Um, so I'm going to go with Shooks, something, something like that. Uh, but okay. you can send a pronunciation guide if you prefer. Morgan says... First super chat I've ever sent. I love that hosts and guests can speak freely on the line. Please stay for profit. 501c3 free. Uh, I, there is no, I have no plans of ever becoming a nonprofit and not because of personal greed, but because of limitations. I have every intention of being um, unabashedly political which is something that as an NPO, there are, there are limitations on. And then also just the, the barriers between where we are now and to what we want to expand to are also less as a um, company as opposed to a nonprofit. So uh, again, I keep very little for myself. I should be saving more. Everything, it, it's pretty much the money y'all send ends up back in the channel in some way or another, though occasionally, you know, I'll go to, Raising canes, get some chipotle, uh, but I don't <laughs> get do guac. Need to eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but I, okay. But I say no to guac, not actually because of the upcharge, but because guac is gross. Uh, but you know, <laughs> there's. I think my uh, my eight year old would agree with you. So. What if I could eat something that looks like a massive boogers but tastes like onions? <laughs> Fucking weirdos with your weird foods. <laughs> I'll dip some crispy oh corn God. into it. That'll fix it. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 9.99 from <laughs> Okay, you're so funny. Uh real pumpkin day. I came in at the dark subjects. I struggled to believe it would ever get better ever again. It actually does, but depression sucks arse. Also, I thought go fuck yourself meant good for you. <laughs> <laughs> good for you, just Good for you, Jimmy. Uh, no one explained uh, to Bart when Bart was on a couple of weeks ago what it was uh, until the end. And uh, uh, it, like the show got off air and he's like, he's just like, so I think it was Bart. It was Bart, right? It wasn't, yeah. I could see it being Bart. Yeah. I, yeah. I think yeah. the parenting guy, the same thing, but the parenting guy had figured it out. The parenting okay. guy was like, by the sixth one, I realized this was a meme where Bart was like, hey, so what was... Was they what's going on? It's like it's it's just yeah. a it's a joke, it's a term of endearment. Oh my gosh. Well, my mom and, and my husband were watching a few weeks ago and they they were getting so there's people telling Jimmy to go fuck himself. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, 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 it's okay. It it's it's his thing. It's, it's like that's what they do. So it's, it's my thing. <laughs> that sounds Sorry. like that sounds like it's my kink. I really like <laughs> to be told to go fuck myself. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. i try not but to anyways. publicly play out my my kinks with my audience <laughs> usually i keep the my audience and my kinks separate uh okay. as far as people they know were, we yeah. cut off at the waist here and no one knows <laughs> no one knows what's going on below the desk <laughs> anyway <laughs> oh, okay um i think this is me mm -hmm. ten dollars from slackback have only been following the line for a month or so. Very happy to have found this corner of YouTube. Great job, apostasy, Jimmy. Go fuck yourself. Thank yeah, you. This is a great, really great corner of YouTube. Everybody, show the corner to more people. We need. I am ambitious, and I'm not kidding. Yeah. I, was, I was adding it up. If everything goes well, uh, by the end of the year, 
there will be 12 different active shows uh, and eight hours roughly of daily content Monday through Sunday through Thursday with a couple of the shows happening sometimes on Friday and Saturday. Um, wow. But it takes a lot to make all of that happen. And viewership would be the greatest thing to increase uh, at the moment uh, for that. Mm -hmm. So share this with people. Like, hey, did you all know yeah. that there is a call-in trans show? I feel like it's crazy mm -hmm. that that show isn't insanely popular. It, it, just yeah, with how- it's such a good show. Yeah, it's a good show, but the topic is also, even if the show sucked, it doesn't, but even if it sucked, it's like, that is the hottest issue in America right now is trans mm -hmm. stuff. And anybody, whether they are an ally or an antagonist or whatever word you want to use, can call and talk to trans yeah. people directly. How is this yeah. not the biggest fucking show on YouTube? Right? It's, it's crazy to me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's such a great resource <laughs> I, to, to learn I so. from. And yeah, yeah, no, I love it. I, yeah, good, good, good. Um, this would be me. Uh, $10 from Slackback. Have only been following the line for a month or so. Very happy to have found this corner of YouTube. Great job, apostasy. Jimmy, go fuck yourself. Yeah. You're welcome. I think we read that one. Yes. I have, oh, you're right. I reread it. <laughs> That's so then okay. this one's you yours. can read this one. Oh, you want me to read that? Okay. okay. Yeah, go what? ahead, go ahead. Eddie Dean says, sorry to keep saying this, but I won't give up till you give us members some chat emojis. Love you. I, I assure you it's on the list of things that will get done eventually. Whether it's done sooner than later will be dependent on if one day I'm like, that's the thing I want to conquer today. But uh, it's probably more likely to happen when we have a local graphic artist on staff, uh, which is another thing that supporting on Patreon and the like will uh, uh, eventually lead to. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, perfect. Okay, she answered. Oh my God, Jimmy. Yes, I look just like this. It would be fun to get to chat about my former life as a conservative as fuck goth as fuck Baptist. It never didn't catch anyone off guard. It is strange, especially <gasps> wow. like so much goth imagery is um, like sacrilegious. Mm -hmm. So it, it, yeah, I, I have nothing but questions. Love uh, it. $20 from I Killed Earl. Lovely to see a new face on the line. Fabulous show tonight. Thank you, Apostasy. Jimmy, go pluck your hair, your toe hairs, smooches. <laughs> I learned a long time ago as a man with hobbit feet. I shouldn't be showing feet on camera, but I'm not, also, I'm not wearing pants. I'm wearing shorts, but I have a very hairy feet. I learned that if you just do it really fast, you're fine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> At one point during the show, I was like, I wonder if he's wearing jeans. No, maybe he's probably wearing sweatpants. Did not know you were wearing. Oh, okay. They're like dress dress shorts. No, they're just shorts. They're not dress no? shorts. Oh, okay. they're like gym well, shorts. They look like oh, I call them gym shorts if I ever shorts. went to the gym. Okay. They're, they're, some, oh, okay. they're other people would use them as gym shorts. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> now, why would I? Why okay. pants? I'm not even wearing shoes. I was shoes. like, oh, I'm not going to wear jeans. No, I'm just sitting. I don't want to wear jeans. I, I'm Very not sweat. Donald ducking it. <laughs> I mean, there's always that <laughs> chance. There's not none of that over here, but yeah, just in shorts. Yeah. I would like okay. someone to send a super chat for those feet pics I just gave for free. <laughs> That's a good idea. Okay, I really like this one. Nine ninety nine from Vibe Farmer. You guys are fantastic together. Great show. Oh. I agree. I mean, I mean, I agree with him. I hope you agree. But I do. I, again, I think you don't suck at this. <laughs> you where a lot of people do i'd say the default <laughs> is sucking at this to tell you the truth <laughs> i'm glad i'm not the default ten dollars okay. from northern spike speaking of chick-fil-a adam raguzia a great youtuber just did a show on chick-fil-a i suggest watching it okay what is the yeah. what's the i, I kind of want to know what the um the premise is because i don't i don't disagree that the place mm -hmm. sucks it's just a, again it's you a matter of adam Ragusia is. I've never American. heard of that person. Oh, okay. He, so my husband listens to him and he just does like, he'll take one topic of like 
food or something and just do like a whole deep dive into like that. Like he did a whole episode on salt mm. and it's fascinating. So he just, yeah, I, I've never listened, but my mom listens to him and my husband. So, um, so would it be a non-political then episode? Is it just about the food? I don't know. Interesting. I, I, I actually don't know because the only one I've ever heard them like go on and on and on about is the salt episode. And I don't know how fascinating salt can be, but apparently he made it fascinating. So now I want to hear this one on Chick-fil-A. So yeah, someone just give me a quick summary in the chat. What we're talking about. Is it a political episode? Is it what was the thesis yeah. of it, of the of the whole thing? Mm. Uh, this okay. one's you, I think. Okay. So $9.99 from Coco Crystals. Great show tonight. The line has become a staple in my life. Keep up the great work. Yeah. I love it. People don't pay after feet pigs. You pay before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, $5 from Masai31. Jimmy is objectively wrong about guac for fire... Fire truck. Fuck. Oh, yes. <laughs> but they uh, disguised it. That's hilarious. I like it. Yeah. Objectively like wrong. Black. Is that possible to be wrong about the flavor of something and whether it's tasty? No. I, I mean, if you think it's disgusting, then I don't think you can be wrong. So. Yeah. I, I'm perplexed that anybody likes it, but yeah. <laughs> I like it. I. I know um, I'm the minority. I, I've, <laughs> I've been an atheist for years. I'm used to being right where most people are wrong. <laughs> um, $10 from Larry Fishman. Here's $10 to make Stacy say Carlin's seven words you can't say on TV. YouTube won't let me include them for some reason. <laughs> for some reason. Okay, you're going to have to give me what are the Carlin's seven words you can't say on TV? Uh, they are, it's been a long time since I've heard the thing, shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. <laughs> but you can actually say half of them now. You can say shit and piss. Um, oh, and I think you can say tits on, what's that? Pretty words. I'm just Googling it. George Carlin's oh, seven okay. words you can't say yeah. on TV. And he, I mean, he had a rhythm to the way he would say it on stage. Shit, shit, piss, oh. fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. I think I've heard him say that. Okay. So $10 for me to say it. Should I say it? I want you to. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So <laughs> without laughing. Okay. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and there you I go. Will I will be did it. <laughs> so excessively angry if three years from now I get an email that's like, I've gone back to church. Would you please take down the episode where I said oh shit? God. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, Talk cocksucker, sucker. motherfucker, and tits. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> oh, that was fun. That actually felt very... Oh, that was good. I liked it. Swear words are Thank nice. You, oh, they are. They're actually like... That's one thing that a lot of people say after deconverting is just like the freedom you feel in just swearing. To me, it's... alone. Even if everybody stopped being religious, I would want to have a tier of words that are swear words, where it's not literally mm -hmm. forbidden because of stupid, arbitrary, like God's going to be bad, but words that are yeah. really reserved for that special Those moment. Moments. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I th so enjoy when someone is antagonizing one of the, it, it, most of the time it happens if someone's antagonizing. Uh, our hosts and one of the hosts are a woman and they keep talking over that woman. I so enjoy as the producer jumping in and going, shut up, you little bitch. Emasculating <laughs> a man with the word bitch. Uh, also okay. emasculating men by telling them that I'm fucking their dads are two imperfections <laughs> of my personality that I've yet to let go of. I understand okay. there's, you know, you could say both of those actions have some inherently problematic features and I'm a, I'm an imperfect person and I, I will work on other things before getting rid of those. Oh my goodness. Yeah. No, I do love hearing you kind of like swoop in when there's a show and yeah. I've, I've, I've had some good producer roasts over the last yeah, few months. Good. There've been some, I'm, yeah. I, I roasting is one of my skills. I admit it. Uh, <laughs> it's a short list of skills, but roasting's on it. $10. Is this me? Oh, 
Yep. $10 from Slackback. Damn it, Jimmy, you read my mind. You read mine twice, felt compelled to give. Go fuck yourself. Aw, that was nice. It's, Very I enjoyed nice. it. What kind of camera <laughs> do you use? Mine? Yeah. Uh, it's just a little Logi. Is it um, the 922? Logitech 922? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Is it bad or good? It's, it's, just, it's pretty good in this situation. I, I, yeah, I, I've it's been impressed with, with it as far as what it is for the night, but I was just curious. Yeah, uh, yeah. But just so everybody knows, I am planning to, it is not, I don't want you to do say, I'm not an, announcing this because you should be embarrassed. You shouldn't. However, uh, uh, after this, you all have been very generous with your super chats. Send more uh, because it technically will be cutting into other stuff. But I think we're going to want to send you the cameras we use and the microphones we use. And so we'll, we'll get that figured out after the show. But thank you, everybody, for being so generous. Now we're going to take your generosity and upgrade Stacy's equipment. That's what, <gasps> that's, that's what we're doing. That's where we're going. So send more money. Uh, <gasps> that way the generosity basically becomes not generous. It's like, I had so much extra. What? <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, my no, goodness. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, uh, I think that, I think that's, I just want that podcast. I want that podcast oh, with you and your mom. Me? I want, I want you and your mom to start I, oh my I, gosh. genuinely content that needs to begin. Um, oh my gosh. no, don't get emotional. I'll be weird. No, I'm not uh, getting emotional. I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. Let's do that people. Let's, let's, let's get that. Let's get the, um, the, uh, uh, they're both made by Elgato. They're the ones that <laughs> basically everybody but Matt and I are on now. Um, we upgraded everybody's equipment on the channel here recently to this stuff. They're oh they're awesome. God. They're the ones that I show up on Orange Show with. Yeah. I was showing off the other day how without a green screen, you can do green screen like stuff and it's super good. Oh but you don't need an actual green screen behind you because it has these depth sensors. They're fucking awesome. Uh anyway, wow. yeah. Everybody make my generosity your generosity. <laughs> 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 because you didn't know I was gonna do this until now. And give us more money, and we'll uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll spend it to upgrade that upgrade oh equipment. For gosh. real though, yeah, you, you got to wow. get your mom really, podcast. We will do. Going. We will do that. Like fuck yeah, that yeah, a hundred percent. I've I've been just worried about yeah, like the 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 stuff. <laughs> I yeah, yeah. It'll also help me help you on the production mm. end because I know that equipment. Yeah. Okay. Fuck yeah. Okay. We're doing it, everybody. All right. Here's the next <laughs> one. Okay. I don't even know. Whose turn is this? Um, I don't know. I think yours. And I also need okay, to I'll fix. I it. missed a couple. So I'm going to okay. get those in while you're here. So this is from Kathleen again. I don't even like feet, but here's one for your feet. <laughs> LOL. I like to tell people I'm keeping my camera off in Zoom meetings because I'm in my underwear and they laugh. Like they think I must be joking. <laughs> oh yeah, I've I've shown up to Zooms full pickle, but I'm not I'm not Jim Acosta. Oh, I don't stand up. Oh, Actually, goodness. I think his I think his story was more embarrassing. I think he thought I think he thought his camera wasn't on. It was a CNN guy. He thought his camera wasn't on, and he started jerking off. What? I know. I couldn't. I could have that up. I'd have to. I'd not have that to I want to see it. Just Read it. No, yeah, don't watch the video, but read the story. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel yeah. terrible for him. Like, on the one hand, if you're, I don't know, I guess I, I'm trying to think if there's a situation where it's like, if I was at a Zoom meeting that I was only expected to listen to, and it was scheduled, and I do, I'm like, my interaction doesn't really matter, but I'm supposed to be there, I don't have to be on camera, and I was independently, like, super worked up and needed to get, you know, my brain fog cleared up because... Being horny is a ridiculous impairment in my life. Uh, would I have done the same thing? And and I have to think the only reason the answer is no is because I'd be too afraid of doing what Jim Acosta did. Like yeah. legitimately, I'd be too afraid that I accidentally slipped up and unmuted <laughs> or uh, or turned on the camera. And I'm not going to do that for free in front of people. They got to pay. <laughs> only <laughs> <laughs> There's a twist at the end of the story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Not that kind of twist, you perverts. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kathleen. 
The Raven 200 says, great show, everyone. Glad to be a viewer. Jimmy, go get stuck in line for five hours between three Russell M. Nelsons. Oh, my God. Actually, that'd be fine if I had a camera. If I could, if I could, if I could record me talking to the three at Russell M. Nelsons, I'm down. I, uh, I am not afraid of, in fact, I almost want to do it on purpose one day, like a debate where one half of the screen of me and then the other half has like 10 people who are all on the other side. Like I'll, I'll take the only times I get flustered in debates as, as everyone saw is when my, is with my friends. Is, is when um, okay. I don't know what level they're at. So I'm trying to right. stay on the like friendly level. This happened this last weekend with Matt where I'm like, are we fighting or are we fighting? I, oh, oh my and gosh. I was like, yes. And so I, I've thought about that conversation a lot and like, okay, I should have asked this clarifying question. I should have done this. Everything would have been fine. But also I should have matched his energy more because I was doing the too much of the like, you know, just a couple buddies. And, and he was talking to me like he was debating anybody. And I should have returned to that. Yeah. I should have, that right. would have been the thing to do to show that uh, I respect him as an equal. Yeah. Anyway. That was, yeah. <laughs> Everyone was so scared. They thought, they, like, they thought the line was coming to an end. Matt and I have full on yeah. yelled at each other it, yeah. off air. It, that, that was nothing. Uh, yeah. anyway. Okay. okay. Um, Okay, from Larry again. And here's Very more, generous. Thank more you, Larry. of my money. Yes, for being um, a great sport. Great show, Apostasy, and go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Larry, for that. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> making me say it again after I said I could never say this to Jimmy. And now I'm saying it all night. So now it's getting old. <laughs> now it's just like rolling off and like pff, whatever. It's lost go all of yourself. its feeling. I feel like. <laughs> Do you even actually think I should go fuck myself or God, You're just going no. through the motions. Six ninety nine yeah. for Canadian from Nate Smith. Thank this you. This is from Nate. He's a friend and actually he lives not far from me at all. Cool. Yeah. Can't do much okay. with that information. None of us know where you I know. live. <laughs> and don't, I don't tell want to anyone. Give that out. I'm don't not. dox yourself. I'll need your address just, to send things after the show. I will but, send it to you. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. It could be I'm a P.O. box or it could be Nate's house if you more trust Nate. I don't know. Because <laughs> he sent me the address and then tomorrow I just show up. I'm like, hey, is, is, am I coming for dinner? I'd be like, Jimmy. No, <laughs> yes? no. You think no. that, but that would be a super weird move. If I actually was at your door tomorrow, I think you would be very confused and mildly I would worried. I confused. Yeah. But I'd be like, okay, cool. We're just like we're at, like we're real friends, so that's cool. He Why helped. is this ogre at my door unannounced, <laughs> just hanging out? Like, is he actually here to date my mom? What's going on? <laughs> that's that's an inside. Not everyone watching will know. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Uh, but um, on an episode of another show, I did try to become Stacy's stepdad. Anyway, I think this one's yours. Okay. Uh, 18 from NBGS TV had a long chat, but you, but YouTube refused it. Why? Love you both. Wish you took atheist calls because it gets lonely out here. What? Um, what do you mean? We do take atheist calls. I do. We, like, I think that's all we took tonight was atheist calls. So we had one undecided and one, yeah. one unsure, but yeah, pretty much atheist was, throughout. Yeah. 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 So try again. Yeah. <laughs> Especially like okay. Sunday is the show we most want theists. Monday mm -hmm. we also want theists, but because we go a little more topic driven, good topic driven and argumentative broadly is also pretty good. Um, this show, it's sort of like this. This show is more about showing off Stacy and the and the idea that I might have friends than anything else. So we don't as hard try to like restrict the lines. However, I did tell the like the screener like. Give, save some room for argumentative calls, but everybody ended up being super nice. Uh, so even once nice. we thought might be. Yeah. And so, but yeah, there's, there's plenty of times mm -hmm. for atheists to call in a week for sure. Yeah. But we would love any help people want to give us. Also, we're going to be, I, I'm working on a set of digital assets that people could use to also send to people like, uh, hey, like here's a, a maybe a YouTube short of me of, of it'd probably be me on there saying like, Hey, I'm Jimmy Snow. I have this channel and we do Colin shows about these topics. And if you don't agree with us, we want to talk for real. We want to hear why you don't and share with you why yeah. we don't <laughs> don't agree. Oh man. 
I feel so. So speaking of things that are emasculating, I don't know why this is true. I feel emasculated by hiccups or maybe really? not more infantilized, I guess. I often use those words interchangeably. I don't feel like my math. I, I guess I do feel like it undermines your masculinity a little too. Cause like when I cough, oh. <clears throat> that's a cough for me. It's deep. It's got a growl. Uh -huh. I sneeze. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a male <laughs> sneeze. I have a, I have a masculine yeah. sneeze. Hiccup. <laughs> So stupid. I don't it sounds know. ridiculous. How, who hiccups yeah. deep? Like, <laughs> who? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I sound really weird. That's how I wish my hey, hiccups sounded. That's just an old, like, sounding man just clearing his throat. So. Yeah. But then I also feel yeah. infantilized because I have no control. Like, it, like hiccups yes. are such a control <laughs> stealing <laughs> thing. Yeah. Hate yeah. that. Yeah. That's embarrassing. Oh, you should yeah. hear me sometimes with my hiccups. Okay, anyways. Okay. Um, $19.99 from Coco Crystals. Happy to contribute towards that upgrade. Oh, my gosh. It's like, thank you. That is so nice. Y'all are the best. Wow. Yeah, wow. Y'all are the best. Wow. Oh, this is I'm the first time, at... like, it's, so the, the thing <laughs> is, is I do this periodically, but I generally don't do it in front of people because I think it's gross. To be like, hey, did you all know that like these five YouTubers have all the equipment I sent them because I thought they were worth it? Uh, but this, but tonight I feel like everyone see how humble I am, how gracious I am. Just if everyone could just sing my, no, I, I don't know. I just kind of yeah. felt like saying like, let's all publicly pressure, yeah. let's all publicly pressure apostasy into starting this goddamn podcast I'm waiting for. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, good. There's Nate. You keep back with a with the. Is this comment. all mine? Yes, can you do it? Yes. No, it's yours. It's yours. Six ninety nine from Nate Smith. I can't do a hang on. I thought you like What would we do with the Russian? We have to they have this fluctuation and then but now I, I feel like I sound more like uh something more southern than, than Russia. What are you doing? Why do you bring you bring dishonor into this house? For, in Soviet Russia, gods do not believe in you. That was fine. I think. <laughs> Is that all right? Was that sort of Russian? That was perfect. In Soviet Russia, I don't know. I'm not great awesome. at the Russian one. I love it. Okay, uh, Kathleen. What? It's amazing. Oh my gosh. This Can one's you yours. Even... This yeah, was supposed okay. to click. Why didn't it? Okay, now it's clicking. I don't know. Yeah. Hurts. Guys can do that. I, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> it's literally just letting that. this finger fly like okay. loose. And then it slams into your other finger and it, wow. it physically feels bad. <laughs> it hurts to do. It's, I remember guys in high school always doing that. Okay. Yeah, well, um, they're practicing oh, those muscles. But yeah, apparently. Okay. I also want that podcast with apostasy and her mom. Oh my gosh. Thank you. My mom didn't live long enough for us to deconstruct together. And that would be so nice to hear about. No pressure though. Still want you to have good equipment anyway. So I'm nice. very jealous of of your deconstruct getting to deconstruct with a parent. Whoa. That's yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds like your mom was also a good mom before it all. Yeah. And so, like, mom. I'm also jealous of that. But <laughs> uh, if, yeah, to 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 have uh -huh. had a greater family and not been at first the black sheep, and then now everybody else who leaves, it's basically the family's tearing into factions. Um, right. Yeah, it's just frustrating. Yeah. Wow. Were you lit okay. by the sun for most of this? And we have gone so oh, long that you're losing the, sunlight? It The sun is starting to change. Yeah, I have this, like, setup because I would have been blinded and whited out. So I put up some, like, things to make me not. And now the sun has changed. Uh, so I was, like, moving myself because the sun was, like, hit it. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for going so long that the sun no, changed. No, I'm fine. I just noticed too. I'm like, oh, I've I've gotten a little darker in here. Yeah. You still look great. I'm not. That's oh, not you. a criticism. It's just noticing a change in my like production obsessiveness. Yeah, I yeah. know. I I I need to. Yeah, somewhere. Don't feel like you need to do anything like that. But yeah, somewhere I'll set up where I can have like consistency for lighting. It's tough. Yeah. And, and honestly, yeah. like the easiest flattering lighting to achieve is with mm -hmm. sunlight. And so it's one of those things where yeah. it's like until you get a better understanding of light and how it works and how it spreads out, mm -hmm. sunlight usually is your best bet, but that mm -hmm. limits when you can do things. And if you're doing live yeah. stuff, it's hard. Um, yeah. Like I, the amount to which I am evenly lit right now, 
is not typical. And technically, yeah. like there's some stuff I'm still not nailing right now. Like I need to get something for this screen to take away its reflectiveness. Because oh, you'll notice little, like, shadow you can see that. And what that is, is the screen of the the screen oh. of this is lit and you can actually make out parts of it, which is why I stopped watching porn oh. while doing the show on this computer. <laughs> Uh, cause people were starting to figure out what I, I was into. I don't know if you're joking. Yes, I'm joking. What the, <laughs> it's so weird. Some people's opinion of me is so low no. that they think I'd be watching porn on air. You <laughs> just say it's so deadpan that I was like, I actually don't know if that's what. Have, have, have you watched The Office? <laughs> yes. Did you see when like when Michael is retiring and he gives Oscar yeah. this thing he handmade that's like <laughs> awful and then they go back to his office and he's just laughing his butt off that he accepted yes. it and he's like that guy thinks so little of me <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it was made by a 5 year old that's how I feel sometimes y'all think oh so little of me no <laughs> that's so um, funny okay. all right here's did we do oh, wait? Did, it, did I skip that no, last one? No, no, yeah. Five dollars okay. from Ember. Set up another show. Make it so. Jimmy, go bless yourself. I promise I'd say that during yesterday's P and Q show. P and Q is like a great name for a show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Apology and Shannon Q. Yeah, that's a good one. That is good. Yeah. Yeah. Mind so your P's and Q's. Yeah. <laughs> I know that phrase. Um, yeah. Good name, but I, we at present don't have a use for the show name, but it's a good name. In, in fact, it's such a good name. It's definitely already the name of a show on YouTube, probably. Like, it's almost impossible that it wouldn't be. And it's probably not a slam dunk to call a show Q right now, unless you're no. a conspiracy theorist. Oh, that's true for like QAnon. Yeah. 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 Then again, my email handle, we just like got our URL and we're working on the website and it's literally qna.com or qna Because finding oh, yeah. any other combination that's less than seven characters of line, like mm -hmm. the line or something like that, or even less than 10 characters, it's just impossible. Everything was taken because the internet is referred to being an online. Oh, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, uh, I just pulled down the curtain thingy. <laughs> oh. Rays of God's light. Um, but yeah, it was, it, line, line is a hard thing to find an available domain name with it in that isn't ridiculous, especially if you're uh, committed to sticking with .com. Anyway, I think this one's for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you have my vote for the mother-daughter show. <laughs> Enjoyed this one. Aw, thank you. Where, I don't even know. Yeah, okay. whatever. <laughs> I have a monitor over there that's actually the monitor for oh. the computer, which is running the show itself, because that's actually not oh this computer, God. believe it or not. And it's created oh. in a way that usually I frame myself where if I'm wanting to look like I'm looking into the scene, I just have to look at that monitor. And that's how I know. Again, production is an art, <gasps> assholes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It is. The shit, I take the shit cereal. Okay. <laughs> $5 from no channel here, bro. What does Mike Tyson call himself when he's neglecting his woodwork? <laughs> Lazy. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it's mean. Let's not make fun of his speech impediment, but a lathe is a woodworking tool. And, and lathe. Uh, okay. Let's not. I got just the, the speech impediment. I didn't get the woodworking tool. But yeah, that's the funny. pun. Lazy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mm -hmm. so. If you've ever seen people carving stuff where they put a piece of wood on a machine and then the machine spins it really oh, fast yeah, yeah. and you bring tools to shape it, that's a lathe. Yeah. Oh, okay, a lathe. That's mm -hmm. funny. Lathe. <laughs> Thumbs out, guns out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. This one's uh, you. Yeah, $10 again from NBGSTV. We'll try again. Please do a show with mom. Mine graduated from this plane of existence 47 years ago today. Aw, but left me with the great gift of atheism. There is no God, she used to say, in Jerusalem. Aw. You're very lucky. Very lucky person yeah. to have had a mother worth remembering 47 years later. I'm wow. sorry, obviously, that you've had to spend though yeah. so much of your life without mm -hmm. her, but but yeah. it's uh, it's nice that your memories of her are so nice. Mm-hmm. 
499 from the Raven 200. Jimmy, go fuck yourself. Go step on a metal D4 die. Go take a majestic destroyer flame by Madara Uchiha. And go listen to the entirety of my mixtape, Love You. First of all, I'd be stoked to take the majestic. Oh, uh, by the way, I th what's it called? A kasetsu? Is that what it is? The a black fire that only goes out when it finishes consuming whatever it's on. You didn't think I'd know what you were talking about, did you? I know exactly what you're talking about. First of all, that would be, I would be honored. But first, I'd want to take some of that shotting gun, especially the Mengekiao, for a, a test drive. Like, the idea of, they first of all, they look cool. Red eyes with these extra pupils that look like commas for some reason. I'm super, you thought you were going to insult me and I'm just ready to nerd out. That would be amazing. That's the way I want to die by black fire. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. $10 from the toaster pirate. Thanks. I have more resolve to say no to all the pressure my fam is giving me to make money by being a uh, good one regarding tarot readings etc i agree with you which is why i haven't done it and will not okay that was probably the caller we had from earlier maybe yeah i think so um yeah okay yeah it's and again, even if you do something that I don't agree with, this is one of the funny things where like I voice my opinions a lot, which can make people feel like I'm judgy, but people who actually know me also know that I have zero opinion of my, like who the fuck cares what I think? It's literally like, yeah. I, I, I always love it with dating advice where people, and this is the example I try to give of like, I get it. I have opinions, but I don't mm -hmm. think I'm judgmental. Uh, I had a friend who had came to me who was like, thinking that they want to move in with their new partner after like four months. And, and, uh, this is, this is my illustration of what I mean by like, yeah, judgy, but not judgmental, I guess. Uh, and was like, do you think that's a bad idea? I was like, I think that sounds like really stupid, like a really bad idea. And, uh, and she seemed taken aback and I was like, but also I'm alone. I am single. I have no prospects really. Like I've got some like long distance people who we are very affectionate with each other. There's a, a person who I'm very close with, but we are so close that we wouldn't want to put our friendship in jeopardy of ending because of a romantic relationship would work out. Like it's, it's, and I wouldn't call myself particularly happy. So maybe the people who are happy and in relationships are the people who make stoop, take stupid chances, like moving in after four months. I don't fucking know. Right. I don't do that, but I don't have a fucking lasting loving relationship in my life. It's the fuck. Do, and then there's the whole problem of like, I've realized lately with dating that I only am, I'm like, I'm like equally parts trying to meet a partner and a co-host where I'm like more interested of like, well, if things worked out, how would how would they be on a show? Uh, like, because that's really what I want to meet is not the the yeah. man, woman, or non-binary pal of my dreams, but the co-host of my dreams. That's what I'm. Right. That's what I'm waiting for. The person <laughs> to take the seat and mic next to me. That's uh, Aww. that's the one. But anyway, so that's what I mean is like I I very much have this opinion of like yeah, of course I have an opinion. I just don't. If you want my opinion, I hope you'll it'll add to your list of like, okay, that's what Jimmy thought. But who the fuck cares what I think? I'm like, yeah, fucking wild. What a weird anyway. <laughs> but if you say all of a sudden, I will always point out that you could have said suddenly instead. Ah, uh, all of a sudden is okay. a nonsense phrase. Get rid of it. It's so stupid. There's no good reason all to right. use it. I will work on that. <laughs> Don't do it apostasy. Do you say all of a sudden? Okay. I'm sure I, yeah, I have, but now I will have that mental note. You made a core memory and suddenly I will stop saying it. <laughs> can you think of a, can you think of a phrase or like a sentence or a line that you feel like all of a sudden fits better than the word suddenly? Mm, well, not off like the top of my head, but I, now I will make, yeah, conscious effort to not say it and I'll and I'll be like oh yeah Jimmy was right okay yeah yeah it's there's Suddenly never a time I've had people who will like try sudden, to use yeah. tone tricks to to like well okay what about like all of a sudden a tree fell versus right. suddenly a tree fell and you're like well that you did something there yeah. you didn't yeah. you, you didn't give the tone thing suddenly 
a tree fell. I like suddenly more. Right. But also, if you're going to stick with all of a sudden, we got to start talking about you quantifying your suddens. What is a sudden that you can have just one? A sudden. And right. All but, of a sudden. but it's yeah. a singular sudden, but you have all of them, all one sudden. <laughs> That's so true. Could you have many suddens? All of many suddens passed. <laughs> and you had all of them? All the many's? The fuck are you talking all about of- all of a sudden? This was a really good, like, English lesson. Thank you. It's so, it's such a stupid phrase, and I wish no one would say it ever yeah. again. Okay. Is this me or you? I don't, <laughs> okay. Um, I'll say it because I don't even know anymore. But Okay. Maybe it's you, actually. Go ahead. Okay. Is it, is it you want to hear me say it? Yeah, sure. Do you want a voice or something? What yeah, is it? Yeah, oh. you do it. You do it. You do it. Yeah, do it in some kind of voice. Okay, Gilbert Godfrey. Hi, apostasy! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hi, apostasy. Great show. I was conceptually to myself, I was conceptually to myself and to others in junior high school, high school, so anti-swear. I was conceptually to myself and to others in junior high school and high school, so anti-swear. I was con- Is conceptually the right word? Does it make... Did you mean conceptually? Suddenly I don't know. I'm puzzled because I can kind of make it work, but I kind of think you meant a different word. I was conceptually to myself and to others in junior high school, high school, so anti-swear. Once I allowed my internal monologue to not stigmatize such words, they lost their taboo from Joel. Okay. Thank you, Joel. I like it. Alec, mm-hmm. Alec base, tell me in the chat whether or not you meant conceptually. Because I think you, there's a chance you did, but some part of me right. thinks you didn't. I was yeah, conceptually. Yeah. I want to know. I want to know <laughs> what you were thinking. <laughs> this one's yours, however. Oh, oh, this is uh, a continuation, I think, of mm-hmm. that one. So I identified heavily with apostasy, voicing the stuffing away of questions I raised in my mind to be answered by God and feel so robbed of them as I never wrote them down and forgot. Thank you. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Joel. Yeah, you do stuff away a lot of questions. The concept of myself to me and to others. Okay. Yeah. So conceptually, oh, okay. conceptually was mm-hmm. uh, correct. It just sort of threw me for a loop all of a sudden. <laughs> I wanted to throw oh, up even sudden. trying to say it. What is it? <laughs> I said, how many suddens do you have? <laughs> I, apparently a, a litany, a cacophony oh, wow. of suddens. And and I will decide who gets my suddens, not you. Oh, okay. So. I won't take them. <laughs> they're my suddens. <laughs> okay, get your own suddens. Get Ooh. one or no. many. And then have all of them. Hi. <laughs> okay. That's it. The show's over. Uh, thank oh, you. Really? Yeah, that's that was the last one. <laughs> that's fast. It's like, okay, we're done. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again, everyone, uh, for your generosity. We will be doing a little a little tech upgrade as a result of it. Oh, here's another one. A new one's in. Oh, uh, oh. very very much appreciate that. Thank you. Oh God, come into my system. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Stacy, for joining. And I'll continue that thank you after this. Worthless Protoplasm PhD says there's exactly one acceptable use, Jimmy. All of a sudden, they're shined a shiny de- de- Okay, you're right. All of a sudden, they're shined a shiny demon in the middle of the road. And he said, play the best song in the world or I'll eat your soul. Well, me and Stacy, we looked at each other. And we each said, okay. And we played the first thing that came to our heads, and it just so happened to be a copyright violation. This is a copyright violation, probably. Anyway, those aren't the, the, the I, I added those last few lyrics. Uh, oh my God. So it's, a, it's a reference to a Tenacious D song. And I will be yeah. honest, you're right. Well, let me see. Um, all of a sudden, there shined a shiny demon. Suddenly, yeah, you need that extra. It like you need the extra beat. It would feel very weird. Suddenly, there shined a shiny demon. Suddenly, <laughs> there shined a shiny demon. That's how you'd have to do it in the middle of the road. Stacy, 
remind people where they can yes. find you and then we're gonna okay. we'll get the fuck out of here oh my gosh this was so fun um so yeah you can follow me on instagram twitter uh add me on facebook and i'm also a co-host on skeptic haven which is a youtube channel i co-host their show on wednesday night uh secular soapbox and really quick, I'm doing a panel on purity culture this Saturday night on Deep Drinks Podcast. So um, actually, Dr. Ben is going to be on that panel with me. So um, come check it out. I'm super excited. So I think that's all the plugs. And yeah, and then I'll be doing a podcast with my mom, like ASAP. So cool. That's I'm excited. Me. I'm very, me very too. excited this for that. This is so fun. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for it was a great all of this. And and your your chat is incredible, everyone here. So they're good thank people. You they're good people. Amazing. And I have a feeling that you're gonna see many of the names from tonight's <sighs> chat in your own chats uh going oh. forward, if I had to guess. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, that is it. That's it for the show. It's over. We now uh <laughs> end the show by running the credits of our fifty dollar and above Patreon tier. Remember, you can Follow us over at patreon.com slash call the line. Uh, and otherwise, have a good night, people. And we will see you back here tomorrow for the Hang Up with Matt Dillahunty and Thursday for the Transatlantic Call-In Show. Do not miss those. This is the part where you have to pretend the mic is cut right. and do stuff okay. as it goes. Yeah. So I'm going to pretend the mic is cut, but I'm also Bill O'Reilly. Okay, here we go. We'll do it live. I said we'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. No, because the teleprompter doesn't work. It doesn't matter. I'll just fucking do it. Devin, where's my fucking muffin? You're done, Devin. You're fucking done. <laughs>